Okay, and welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in the crowd. Please let me know if you hear me. I'll try to do somewhat of a sound check. Okay, there we go. We got to cut, cut the music. I see. I see. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome on in tonight. Hey, it's late Friday night, a little later than I anticipated because uh, I know one of our uh, guests tonight is elderly, and uh, I don't want him to... Uh, to be up too late past his bedtime. <laughs> uh, that's our uh, our good friend, the guest uh, and guest and jailbird, uh, Rick Snay. Uh, so we'll try to uh, get him out of here before uh, it's his bedtime. I know, like I said, I know it's rather late, but before we do that, I want to welcome everyone in tonight. So uh, we have a very exciting. Show. So let's see if I can say hello to you guys. And. Uh, see what's up here we got goddess welcome in goddess good to see you and uh dark arts by adrian good to see you what's up adrian noe amos what's up noe true justice hey true justice what's up good to see you here thank you for being here all right whoa what's up bobby smith bobby smith in the house Adrian in the house. All right, Dennis. What's up, Dennis McKean? Uh, what up with you? Good to see you. Well, hello, uh, Carol and Kathy S. Welcome in. Hey, Amy, my main mod. What's up, Amy? Amy, what's up? Please, uh, please post some links uh, periodically tonight, Amy. And um, oh, who else we got in here? Rebecca Ann, 1965. What's up, Rebecca Ann? Hey, Adrian. Great job on the channel last time. Yes, everyone, once again, please give Adrian a round of applause for uh, being awesome. So awesome, awesome. Guys, what's up? Haunted Parlor. What's up, Miss Haunted Parlor? October 2024 promises to bring unexpected big events. Uh, you guys just wait. There are some coming, and uh, I won't say a thing. And intense energies in the middle of the month, yes. And we're just getting started. Yes, more bombs coming. Then again, what do I know? Well, you're calling it. You're calling it. So good job. I mean, you've already seen one, which is, uh, hey, I might as well, I might as well uh, chime in now. So I don't see anyone else in the chat. So, uh, hey, look, all of you uh, 
people in the lurker crew join the chat please uh what's up digital all right yeah so i might as well go in uh, go in go ahead and chime in let's see what we got here now i'm gonna uh i'm gonna try to chime in here on this uh todd click arrest hey what's up ashley and nancy drew what's up nancy drew all right so Todd Click said, uh, Michael Osbrook says this. Okay. Now I am suspicious about how Todd Click is being treated. He's being held without bond until his initial hearing, Monday 10 7, I believe, from the arrest warrant. A warrant without bond has been issued for the defendant. You are hereby commanded to arrest Todd Click. Okay. Um, and the judge added no bond until the hearing at the end of the probable cause affidavit. Okay. Nobody on the record asked that no bond be set. He says, I find it impossible to understand why under Ripley County's local rules, which he posts, uh, Click was not immediately granted bond of 2.5K for two L6 and a misdemeanor. Okay, the two level six felonies and a misdemeanor. Uh, that should be 2,500 according to the uh, Ripley County local rules. And he says last, so Click gets to spend the weekend in jail because an Indiana court won't follow its own rules or bail schedule. Um, so, smells about right. Smells about right for October. Um, but hey, I'd like to say this. If it's good for Click, it should be good for Liggett because we know that he falsified witness statements on the probable cause affidavit for uh, Richard Allen. Did he not? So if it's okay, uh, it should be okay all the way around. Okay. Uh, good for the gander. Good for the goose. So, uh, with that being said, uh, let me uh, let me get my guests up here because uh, I did not send the link in time for them. So uh, I'll post it here, and hopefully they can manage to click this. If not, I'll be a, somewhat of a delay. So listen up here. Uh, topic for the night is a circle in the round, a uh, round table with Rick Snay, Alex Voorhees, and myself on um, third parties in the Delphi murders, okay? And uh, so let's see what I can do here. I got to get my, my ducks in a row. Um, so that's what we'll be looking at. Let's see if I can. Uh... I cannot ruin this show tonight. Let's see. Okay, so let's see what we got. All right, I see you guys coming in. Thank you for joining the chat. I'm trying to get this all in order. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to get at? Roundtable on the third party. So while we wait for our guest, I have a few videos to play for you to set the stage here. So, uh, so let me see if I can manage to pull this off on the fly. So let's see, which one first? First, I'd like to go with uh, this one here. Okay, I don't know where Alex is. Um, well, why is my browser having a problem sharing this? Come on, this is necessary. Are you kidding me on the, uh, on the video files? They're not gonna work tonight? 
Can we please? StreamYard is the absolute garbage of live streaming, ladies and gentlemen. But hey, it's free, so uh, what can I say? Uh, that one didn't work. Let's see if another one will load. Because if my videos aren't going to load, we're going to uh, forego the videos. Let's see. All right, so I'll have to play them differently. But let me welcome the guest. So, so I'll get our guest in here while I get uh, my videos together. But uh, we got here tonight, Rick Snay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hey. Round table. Up, Rick? Good to see you, man. You might not join. Yeah, celebration, man. Celebration yeah, what's up? Party. So our jailbirds, uh, Todd Click and Rick Snay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I heard that elderly remark. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you out of here before your bedtime. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I got my coffee, man. So Rebecca says, "Rick, in, uh, hang in there, bud." Hey, thanks. Yeah, for man. Alex, you're you're looking a little furry there. What what you got going there? You got well, some... yeah. Me and uh, Rick got the presidential run of, of uh, Delphi stress, so like we aged a lot, either hair or <laughs> looks, whatever you know. Because we came in here uh, like way different looking yeah, <laughs> onto <yeah>. the case. <laughs> yeah, man, you, you do look really different. Yeah, I'm looking like uh, Hugh Jackman, freaking squirrel. Yeah, yeah, something. yeah, Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough, dude. But yeah, well, it's look. good times right now, dude. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, I tell you what. Hard. I had the most amazing set of three videos uh, for you guys. Let's see. Let's see. If, I'm going to have to do them the right. stupid way. Jeez, uh, man. What a failure. What a failure. Let's see. We'll start with this one. Let's see. Yeah, my stream yard mm -hmm. doesn't want to load. So first up, we have uh, we have this one. Okay, you guys ready? Yes. All right. I'll do it ghetto style. Let's see. <laughs> All right, that guy, right? So, is that that's Kim? Is that Kim Riley? The voice that you that's heard bursting. Let's see. Same as. Okay, let's see. This guy right here. Here's what he's gonna say. Okay. Uh, keep in mind that there uh, the likeliness of possibility of, of more than one person. Uh, we're, we're not saying that the person, that the voice that you heard is the same as this person here. This is all very complicated, very involved, and... Okay. Okay, that's one. Um, I'll have to do these the stupid way, so just just uh, bear with me. My technology on the free stream yard is failing, so here we go. Yeah. Let's see, here we go. Next. What we have publicly addressed is people want to make the assumption that the voice saying down the hill it belongs to the person that's captured in the image uh, from the cell phone. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Um, we're not making any assumption about right. that. Uh, we have more video. Uh, we have more audio. Uh, but it is specific to the investigation, and that's why it's not being released at this time. Okay. Okay. And we keep, we're not done yet. We're, d we're nearly done now. We're nearly done. I got four. They're short. We have a completed puzzle right now. And it's an aerial view of what happened to those two little girls. Yeah. The only thing we're missing is who. All right. We have a Last one. Just for the naysayers. Just for the naysayers. This is our preface to tonight's show, by the way. Are we still looking at Mr. Logan as possibly involved? And everything and all, and all of it. We're looking at all of it. We said when this happened, we were going to start all over. So you never, so, so you never cleared him, Mr. Logan. We haven't cleared anybody. All right, you got that. That was at the press conference for Richard Allen's arrest. I was standing right behind Emily Longnecker when she asked him those questions. Amazing. Yeah. So after Allen's arrest, we haven't cleared anybody. It's an ongoing federal. It's an ongoing investigation, and we have all federal agencies at our disposal, is what he said. So we have Burston in the first day saying possibility of more suspects. Okay, and and then and then that bridge guy voice and picture is not necessarily the same individual. Okay, 
and and then we have Doug Carter saying that we have an over uh, head view of all that happened to these poor girls. The only question is, uh, who are the person? Who is the person or persons responsible? Okay, so that's how we're going to start, and um, and so I figured to uh, to get us started for anyone who isn't uh, familiar with this community, I'd give a really quick summary of uh, the basics of our. Uh, perspectives because we have a three-tiered perspective tonight we have um we have alex Voorhees down at the bottom uh who uh is a believer that mr richard allen is guilty of the uh involvement with the delphi murders of abby and with libby we have mr rick snay here who uh believes that richard allen is absolutely innocent of any involvement in the murders of Abby and Libby in Delphi. And we have Mr. The Prof here, uh, yours truly, who, who really uh, is pretty central. Um, I really don't have a feeling one way or the other, but I think it's possible that he could have involvement, but is definitely not the killer. So, so we have three different perspectives on the involvement of Mr. Richard Allen, who's currently charged with the Delphi murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. And so tonight, well, we, we will be discussing... Uh, the fact that what we do all have in common, oddly enough, is that we all believe that there are third party perpetrators who have yet to be <laughs> apprehended. Okay. Yeah. So there's uh, more to it. Yeah. So there, there's more to it. Bottom line. So, so with that being said, um, yeah. So I, let me let uh, Rick uh, give a little opening statement. Then I'll let Alex. And then uh, I have a small uh, presentation of. Uh, of material that I'd like to present and have us all uh, chime in on, uh, and that be the content of tonight's show before we discuss with the chat. Well, you know, I I find it really strange now that so many people say that. Well, just just look at the picture. It's obviously Richard Allen. When we had the picture for how many years and nobody in Delphi said, that's the dude from CBS. You really can't tell who it is in the picture. So when people tell me that they think Richard Allen's guilty because of the picture, I've heard them say things like, well, look at his jeans. They bag at the ankles the same way Richard Allen's do. And I've never seen anybody else. And then I show them a picture of me like, well, my jeans bag at the ankles. You know, <laughs> it's... Uh, and as far as the third party goes, um, the main thing is it has to be relevant. It has to be, uh, <clears throat> it has to have, as they call a nexus. And to me, when you describe what you did to one of the victims of a murder, and it actually has information that only someone at the crime scene would know, then to me that's relevant and then you have another guy who you know it's it, sure it's it's hearsay and everything but yet it's hearsay by one of the first people they talked to in the first week of the investigation saying that the other person they talked to is responsible for the murders and then you have that same guy with pictures on his facebook a couple months later, that almost mimicked the crime scene. So, you know, I I think there's a lot of people just overlooking a lot of relevant stuff, you know. I agree, and, uh, and we'll be getting into that, uh, the various third-party mm, suspicious in individuals, including uh, the ones mentioned in the Franks Memorandum, who you're referencing. So thank you, Snay. Uh, Alex, what's what? Well, you got anything to say on this? Uh, yeah, you got to take risks sometimes. But um, I've been seeing a lot of third party stuff on my end. Like I'm the only one. Um, you know, I'm like the crazy guy shouting in the corner about the same thing over and over and over, <laughs> just fixated on it. So like Stevenson's, like all those people that were super fixated with their weird POIs, you know, before arrest. I'm like that with. Uh, stevenson's case and and everybody's like man he can't let it go he just needs to let it go like let it let it die but you know they keep saying weird stuff over there and it's like uh i'm hypersensitive to it because um 
you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm fixated on it. But they, they keep talking about that they're looking for somebody else that's like more violent than Richard Allen and um, possibly involved with both crime scenes. And they're making mention of one person does the killing, one person does the staging, um, and then one one person orchestrates it, and then other people carry it out. And that, to me, it just no matter what, you know, you can have Odinism, you can have truckers, you can have meth, you can have whatever. It means uh, multiple people uh, organized crime, basically. And that would mean that for both. I mean, that's kind of where we all three agree for Delphi is that it's organized in nature, like multiple people. And it could, yeah, it could be related to crime, but um, we don't, we don't exactly, we haven't worked out all those yet, but that's like where we're seeing stuff pinging, you know? And then if you're a solo person, um, like when I was solo RA, like really hardcore last year, I had like mainly criminals wagging at my leg and being like, there's more to it. There's more to it. And now it's kind of the opposite as trials come and you show people like, Hey, Hey, they're looking for other people after arrest. And they're like, get that shit out of here. Case is over, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. uh, and I'm like, well, that's, you know, I, I like to be on that wavelength, but who's to say once case is over, you're not going to have like, I think I, I do believe the cops and uh, people on criminal side are going to be doing wacky stuff, basically taunting or hinting uh, that they're, they're still a living, breathing person that was at that crime scene still out there today, basically, because that's what I see when you see a hyper aggressive reaction uh, from prosecution side. That's what that means. And when you see all the taunting and weird stuff, criminal side, that's what that means as well, I think. So that's kind of what I've been seeing. Uh, uh, that's where I'm at right now. I don't, I don't know if he'll ever be caught, but uh, yeah, like Rick said, you got to, uh, Rick said, you got to make sure like they're just not catching like any Yahoo, like after trial wraps up and trying to like bury it all on him either, you know, because that could be the case too in the future. If shit gets too hot, you know, they just bury it on some mm-hmm. random ass person to shut everybody up. But um, yeah, it is looking like, uh, there's somebody still living and breathing because if they were dead uh they would dump it all on them like no problem right now i think so it's somebody it's somebody still alive for sure i think if uh there is a, another third party person yeah so that's where i'm at with things you know yeah yeah well I, here's what I'll, I'll say to both of you is uh is the points that i'm picking up on from your statements are that uh there are things that are illogical for instance as Snape mentions, you got stupid conclusions being drawn like, like, oh, his pants bag at the bottom because they're a little too long for his legs. So it must be Richard Allen. Okay. Although for years they said five, nine and higher and Richard Allen is five, four. Okay. Then, then they'll say, well, a bullet that came out of his gun was at the crime scene. However, what they fail to mention is that uh, the bullet was found after the crime scene had been processed. Uh, it was missed. Uh, there's a possible lack of controls of the crime scene in between the time that, that it, uh, the, the crime scene is discovered and the bullet is discovered. We haven't seen any um, evidence of the re, uh extraction of the bullet from the crime scene, like uh, digging it out of the ground, uh, the marks that it had on it when it was dug out of the ground and the whole process. Um, We also uh, are led to believe by many ballistics experts that it's actually a junk science to try to identify extraction marks uh, on unspent rounds because the science is actually uh, coming from the firing pin or the cap. So, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's one thing. And then, uh, as Alex was saying, the the other side of the argument that's kind of uh, gaslighting is to say uh, we're going to just flat out believe what the law enforcement is saying and take it all as uh, absolute fact and uh, coming from a place of integrity because we don't want to take the risk on being wrong. So the thing about uh, like Snay, myself and and Voorhees here is a. we will, we will all openly admit that uh, we're not afraid to be risk takers because, uh, hey, I, I, I put it this way is what the hell does it matter or what wrong is there or, or in, in actuality, what kind of risk is it 
to 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 risk a uh, a theory on a crime uh, sitting in a chair on the internet. I mean, it, there's no risk at all. So what is there to be afraid of? So I'm not afraid of the risk. I know that you guys aren't, and uh, and I'm also not going to go for the stupid uh, illogical conclusions and, and gaslighting. Um, so I like to exercise novelty of thought. It's something I've pushed a lot on this channel that uh, that I. I go with, which is uh, that because of my experience in the arts, I know that it's novel conclusions uh, are what is always considered genius or needed or, or breakthroughs or vanguard. And that's what I'm interested in contributing, not, uh, not just uh, patting the backs of uh, somewhat incompetent law enforcement uh, and possibly compromise. So anyway... <laughs> Yeah. With that being said, I want to do a deep dive into some some of my most interesting third party uh, candidates. Candidates, yeah, that's a good term because they're they're truly not suspects. So some of these are coming from Reddit, some of these are coming from uh, other investigators, and some of these are uh, figments of our imagination. So. Um, yeah. I know that that's one thing Alex and I discuss a lot are, uh, are like, uh, basically Alex and I do a lot of, uh, profiling of the potential criminal, uh, of this crime. Um, so and we found a lot of people that were like, for sure they didn't do it, but, uh, they, pro we, for sure they know who did, you know? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people like that. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy, man. But I'm, I'm in the agreement that, uh, like, I don't think this thing was plotted on the internet or it was a transient trucker or serial killer. And that's like where the overlap with Solo and Overworld is, too, is that it's um, it is local, it's always like local drama, local environment happenings, I think, for uh, even Stevenson's, but especially Delphi. So it's not like some trucker just came through and did it on a whim or something. You know, it's all it, it did brew up from uh, local stuff for sure. No matter what, all that extra <laughs> stuff is um, way down the line. Like all the, you know, dark web stuff, extra cases, any anything extra that pings back. And um, you know, the reason that stuff is important to me is because it does hone back and make stuff more clear on stuff that uh, is local. Um, so I won't address that right now because I've already addressed a lot of that stuff like thousands of times. But um, yeah, local is what's like the bread and butter. That's like what's baked into the cake, like local connections and stuff like that. You're like you're more likely to find the killer by somebody that lived in town versus uh, looking all over the country at different people. You know, so it, it makes sense. Or on the internet, like at, in uh, for like international dark web people or something. It, the local stuff is uh, definitely what's more important. And I think that's like where the yeah the motivation lies for uh, both cases for sure, but especially yeah especially Delphi, yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, the one thing that I look at with Delphi is that if you talk about an organized crime thing, um, there are like in any kind of a situation where you have. Uh, organized crime. People think of organized crime as uh, gangsters, Al Capone type stuff, the mafia, but there's so many different types of organized crime. Um, organized crime could be um, somebody who has a hookup, you know, like uh, down by the border and maybe he'll take uh some guy, some guy will go down there and tell some family that he's going to smuggle them across, you know, over the border. And what he does is he kills the parents and takes the kids and they traffic, you know, that's organized crime. Um, and basically all you need to be involved in organized crime is yourself and some people that want to do the same kind of crime that you want to do. And these small towns and small counties and everything um, I learned from growing up in Logansport, we, we didn't have a whole lot of murders, but, um, the ones we did have rarely ever got solved. 
if they didn't find the person standing there with a weapon in their hand, they probably didn't solve it. And it was because so much of it was um, involved in things like drugs or prostitution or something where somebody higher up was getting their palm greased or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's sometimes what I think we have going on here. Um, because remember, Elvis Fields did not just tell his sister that he murdered the girls. He also said that he helped somebody set a fire where two girls were killed. Now, he might be confusing things and thinking about the four girls that were killed in the Flora fire. Okay. And, you know, to me, Flora was an insurance job and they didn't expect anybody to die. They thought everybody would get out, but the fire went too fast. The girls died and it became a quagmire. They got to do something. You know, now we've got a murder on our hand. A yeah, once the murder. threshold reaches, yep. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then to hide those 911 mm -hmm. calls for Flora for 60 years at the cost of $60,000. Someone explain that to me. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Seems great like a lot point, of those cases. Says, uh, Ashley to Rick. Yeah, great point. I mean, Elvis, the thing about Elvis for me that is most damning all, almost more than anyone else in the Frank's memorandum is the uh, apparent pre-knowledge of the or, or the the knowledge of the crime scene and aspects of it, which he should not have. Uh, ideally, he, no one would have it other than someone involved. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of that on Delphi, and that means that even mm -hmm. if it was just two, three people in the know when it went down, that means like word of mouth uh, spread. So it kind of leads more credence. And what leads more credence, so if you say uh, so-and-so at McDonald's ran a drug ring and did the murders, like you usually won't get any um, pushback or people, they'll laugh or whatever, but you're not going to get like an aggressive uh, counter reaction. But with this case, if you touch upon um, people with accurate, you know, that probably knew something or whatever, then you get really aggressive pushback. And all three of us here have gone that for naming uh, different people for sure that probably probably did have uh, you know guilt knowledge or in the in the know somehow you know so that that kind of mm -hmm. makes me think it's uh yeah it is organized crime but you know like you said Snay it doesn't it only takes two or three people you know to make you don't need a whole network conducting one murder but yeah in those scenarios the cops that's why they they're peaceful and stuff they they already came to that conclusion along like they they know who did it in that scenario basically so they're all at peace and stuff and in a lot of those cases it has to reach a certain a higher threshold than normal when there's uh you know organized crime and kickbacks going on it has to reach a higher threshold for them to actually do something because the way they view it it's like uh let the biome or environment kind of clean itself out we don't need to go and clean up the fish tank uh you know why bother if it's already like doing what it's supposed to in, in their eyes basically you know so yeah i think i think they they came to that conclusion a while ago sometimes you know a long time ago <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And i mean i mean let's be clear because there's some gaslight i just can't accept uh for 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 somewhat setting a context for this uh the way that some people will have you believe is like this is a is a is an ideal. Uh, what's the movie with Jim Carrey when there's he's in Truman the, Show? That, that we live that, that that Delphi is a Truman Show community. Uh, everyone's happy all the time. Uh, there's absolutely not one drug in the entire community. Uh, there's no child molestation. Uh, no murders have, have ever happened anywhere in Carroll County. There's this idealist sort of fantasy world that people. Uh, approach discussing this crime with and uh, let's be clear okay the families of the victims themselves were waist deep in methamphetamine okay the people surrounding these girls are ankle deep in child molestation um the community as a whole is extremely poverty ridden uh, methamphetamine trade seems to be somewhat of the lifeblood of the economy. There's a lot of gang activity, particularly white supremacist gangs, because of the uh, 
stemming from the prison and Biker Connect and uh, Indiana being a hub state or region that's a centralized hub for the entire Northeast Coast and uh, Midwest. Uh, it's a crime ridden place. So, so let's not kid ourselves here. And that's the context in which uh, the following discussion we'll be having uh, about these murders uh, has taken place. Um, so I'd just like to preface uh, our discussion tonight with the fact that this is all for educational purposes. These are not necessarily our, uh, we're not pointing the fingers at anyone. We're not trying to dox anyone. We're not uh, advocating anyone contact these people. We're going to be discussing. Uh, these are other people's, uh, these are tips basically our law enforcement product that are naming other individuals who are somewhat possibly suspicious or match sketches and this sort of thing. So uh, as we go into the show, know that the people will be discussing. Uh, this is all just uh, an education for uh, what is in the public sphere already. Okay. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to start by reading this very interesting thing. Uh, I'm going to start from the outside of, of these people go and go on in. <laughs> this is a Reddit post um, in which someone says, honestly, this is all so exhausting, watching all of these theories and people speculating all this shit. Nobody really knows what they're talking about. However, this is something that I experienced firsthand with these families on a couple of occasions. So this is from a local. Firsthand myself. And looking back on it now, it's freaking crazy. Okay, so in total, in 2017, there, there was around in between 20 and 25 members of this family that lived in that community. And they are avid campers. And every year we would go camping at the Covered Bridge Festival, and we would stay in this camping place that was right beside a golf course and a woods. Well, every year on Saturdays, it was a tr tradition to play flashlight tag at night time in that golf course and in the woods. At the time, I was a teenager, but all of the older men in the family would play as well, a few ex-military. And us kids just wanted to get away from the adults and go party a little bit or whatever on the ghost course and be teenagers, probably smoke weed. And that's exactly what we did. However, the adult men, the ex-military specifically, would bust out the fatigues, the night vision, um, and were freaking pumped about it every year. By far, the main attraction for them was for them to come camping. So while we're roaming around on some golf course, these men were at the tops of trees with their nice night vision, hunting us, watching us, stalking us. They would be up under bridges and shallow creeks, hiding places that clearly we weren't going to be. Now, with that being said, I feel like personally, and this is my personal opinion from my firsthand experience, if anybody in them families had anything to do with this, I know for a fact that they've got night vision. And they have no problem hiding in trees, in the tops of trees, and then they're full fatigues, being lookouts, or whatever it is that they do up there. And also have made it known to me personally that they enjoy hunting, stalking young children, and frankly do it on the regular. So for me personally, with just them, a couple of things I mentioned, like, he's Abby's neighbor. He looks just like young bridge guy. He knows the land better than anybody. I mean, just... Them few things right there are really big warning signs for me. Feel free to comment. Let me know how you feel because I've been twisted about it for a couple of months and no one wants to listen to what I had to say except for the defense team. They loved it. So hypothetically speaking, say someone does do something horrible when they're a teenager or young adult and has to go off to prison for an extended amount of time. And while they're there, they have to make a decision on what's more important, the perseverance of life or not being a white supremacist. And they choose to join a white supremacy gang. And while they're there, they climb the ranks in this group. And with the caveat that obviously they can't practice white supremacy in prison, so they use Odinism as a cover for it. But they get all the way to the top, and then one day get, they get out of prison. I guess my first question is, what's life after being at the top of a white supremacy gang doubling as Odinism and then being released? If there is any overlay with anything else I mean, is there any overlay with anything else? For example, maybe a motorcycle club. And if that's the case, how do you suppose that goes down? Keeping in mind that while in prison, he was the top dog. And shouldn't that be the case? And, no, and should that be the case, 
would there maybe be not as much loyalty or trust as there would be with other brothers that have been in this gang and been friends and have done things throughout the years for one another? Just like all of a sudden, hey, there's this new guy. He was important somewhere else, but now he's ours. And there's no requirements or anything for him to get into this club because of his status. Would you think that that would cause a rift throughout the motorcycle club? And then let's say potentially not only were they the leader of a white supremacy gang, but now they're also part of a prominent motorcycle club. And then if you find out maybe he's a Freemason as well. First of all, off, is that allowed? <laughs> Second off, is it allowed? Uh, if it is allowed, how does it pan out? Because like, do they have a competition amongst one another bad guy clubs or do they work together to get where they need to be? Because that's crazy if that is something that could potentially happen for more reasons than one. I have a follow-up question to August, too, but I would also like to see the response to that first. Uh, but it's a good question and something to think about. Oh, and also, who would be the highest ranking out of all them groups, like in society or in the underground world, of what people like them have been known to do? Okay. Now, here are the two individuals she's referring to. These are a father and son couple. This is the father. Okay. And this is a son. They live in between Teresa Liebert and where Abby Williams used to live. Okay. Once again. Now, why I found that interesting is because I stumbled upon this in researching Gabe Ellis. This was the contents of the white car that was uh, stopped uh, what was it, two days after the murders of Abby and Libby? When he was arrested, there was $809 cash, a monocular scope, Gen Pro night vision scope, oddly enough, two pairs of binoculars, a bipod, a rifle scope, a rifle flashlight, trail cameras, a phantom drone, and of course the car. Okay, and you may remember that this comes into play because of Tina Rodell and Megan Allen, okay? So basically, we're, we're expanding out from these two individuals that this Reddit user was referencing who lived near Deer Creek, near Teresa Liebert. And I showed you the contents of uh, Gabe Ellis's trunk, which included the night vision and other scopes. Uh, and now this is Tina Rodell who is the one who, uh, who reported that <clears throat> in that car there were drugs. And she called Liz Lesenby and said two men were with her daughter, Megan Allen, and they, uh, no, said that there were men, and they were Elijah Cook, Ke Keegan Callis, Josh Weaver, Tyler Joe French, Travis Janicki, and also a Garrett, who I believe to be Garrett Kurtz. She also says her son Blake was not part of this group. Tina said her daughter called from the bridge on the 13th and, and that when she came home on the 15th, she was not in good condition. She alleges her daughter was raped and beaten by men as an initiation. It is rumored it was for the Sons of Odin group. She also claimed that her daughter came home with a pair of earrings. Tina shared that the Delphi murders could have been an act of revenge against Libby's dad. She believed that Derek German snitched on her sister, Christy Lynn Martin, Keegan Callis, Tyler, Joe French, and Jeff Reagan. Okay, it is rumored that Eric Alter was associated with the crew along with Abby's uncle, da uh, 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 David Erskine, uh, Libby's dad, Derek German, and possibly Garrett Kurtz and Anthony Greeno. Tina said that Cheyenne and Cheryl were there with the group and may have witnessed the crime or may have been lookouts. Okay. Harvey claims that Tina also shared in private uh, that Josh Hewitt may have been with the group. Josh Hew Hewitt told her daughter, who started the Flora fires, Tina's daughter assault initiation happened in a gray barn near the bridge. Uh, and that Libby's dad, Derek German, ripped off Christy Lynn Martin, uh, who was a meth making supplier. Uh, Tina also said that Megan Allen uh, had to stab a girl as part of this initiation. We've got T Robert Tesh, uh, Tyler Joe French, Josh Weaver, Josh Hewler, Hewitt. These are all parts of the Kokomo crew. There were rumor and discussions that they were out of the bridge camping out the night before. These were rumors that people were making meth and stuff out there too. There was a rumor that Robert was dating Cheyenne. This is unconfirmed. 
Megan Allen and Keegan Callis went to the bridge that day and allegedly met with additional Kokomo Crew people. Kokomo Crew possibly had drug motives against Derek German. Tina claimed that Megan Allen was high on drugs. She got lost from Keegan and others that were out there and was calling her multiple times. And Julie Melvin says that it was actually in the AM hours. And so I'm going to quickly do this so you guys can chime in on all of this. But here are the list. Okay. These are Garrett Kurtz friends. I just showed you the Kokomo crew. And here are uh, some of uh, Keegan Klein's uh, associates. And these are uh, some other associates of the Klein. And let's pull this down and discuss. <laughs> So that's a whole bunch of stuff that can be found to this very day on Reddit. But I wanted to present it to you guys because it starts to form a cohesive story, in my opinion. Dude, I will say um, there was this, uh, like, tweaker guy. It's like 2021. He was going around telling everybody um, that it was an Odinist sacrifice. Uh, he was talking about it as a real sacrifice, so whether it's staged or not. But yeah, he said he said basically the scene was Odin and sacrifice, and uh, he went to Cali, that British guy, and then me, me and Matt tracked him down because it was like a friend of a friend that said he knew, and we tracked him down or whatever. But that kind of goes with what I was saying. There's a lot of like local tweakers around the case, kind of saying similar stuff. So that means. Um, it kind of leads credence to that, to I, that think. I think. Oh, damn. Oh, damn, I'm damn like, like, an echo, echo dude. dude. <laughs> that's, that's... All right. I had my mic turned off, so it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. But yeah, that guy was total Tweakerville. He's a mushroom hunter. And uh, he kind of looked like um bridge guy at the time to us or whatever. But uh, have you guys heard about that the ATM robbery uh, where that guy wore that mask? They said was like the, the bridge guy mask, supposedly, you know? Really? And um, yeah, the mask, whole mask and mustache thing sounds like really stupid, right? But um, where a lot of the like Stevenson's tip came from that had some stuff that was accurate, uh, like the girls being coerced at gunpoint. This was like March 2017. Uh, mind you, it it made the person saying that stuff was talking about the fake mustache and, and a mask and stuff. And like I've heard from a bunch of tweakers and stuff local, they're always talking about fake mustache, mask, you know, the ATM stuff and then mentioning the Odin and stuff, uh, whether it's staged or not. Um, so like, yeah, a lot of people knew stuff they weren't supposed to basically way back when. And other people seem to know that Alan was there, killer or not. Other people talking about. Um, like, yeah, the more violent killers supposedly, or like, like me and Prof were talking about the rumors of like uh, the the dude with uh, either blonde or reddish brownish hair that was like over six foot or whatever, and then another chick supposedly uh, that was there. Um, and in my head, when I hear that stuff, those rumors, I'm thinking uh, if there is any validity to it, it's probably like perimeter person or um stager like somebody doing the staging and stuff but i mean that was the whole point of um <clears throat> that memorandum last whenever it came out they were basically trying to say you know baseline uh this is a multiple person event basically it doesn't have to be a whole crazy network or whatever but yeah it means it's like more criminal in nature and not just a a, a spaz attack out of nowhere or a uh family on family thing you know mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's kind of looking like that dude i would just say yeah my own experiences from what i was getting i've been getting weird stuff from higher ups on both ends uh, and when i mean higher ups i don't mean like baldwin and rosie i'm talking like uh criminal type people and then on the other end law enforcement type people not carroll county but uh others just the signals i've been getting uh, yeah, it's looking it's looking like a multiple person event. So when I when I say signals, I've been getting uh, so like when they're accepting Delphi tips on other cases, they wouldn't even bother. You know, cops do. They're short. They'd be like, get that out of here. It's already solved. Like so, if somebody else is another police department saying we believe that case is criminal in nature too, 
and they they had been behind the curtain on that case that that means a lot to me and then just a lot you know, everybody knows the type of criminal stuff i've seen on the other side because we've shown a lot of the receipts and crap but it's look it's looking like a multiple person uh jamboree basically you know yeah and the harsh reaction to us saying this stuff at this moment because we're not going to be 100 percent accurate because we don't have the case files and behind the scenes crap and we show as much behind the scenes as we can and and stuff from released by defense but just by the harsh reaction like shut it down it's over shut it down shut it up shut it down shut it off uh that's telling me that they're trying to wrap it up and bury it. But at the same time, that's fine and everything. But uh, I do think the case wrapping up will trigger uh, an event that will like flesh out more of the picture basically. Uh, So it's like a win-win either way in that regard, as far as their goal, trying to bury everything out. But um, it's like, dude, we saw what we saw with our own eyes, you know, and our own experiences. So it's like, you're not going to tell us that, you know, we didn't see that shit. We all saw it. Well, we yeah, it. the more you try you to know? tell me what not to say and to go away, the less likely it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. Yeah, it's some, it's some crazy. That's the thing. If you go on and say, I think it's not Alan, but I think it might be a, a serial killer. We don't know. You're not going to get much pushback. But if you're like, yeah, I think it might be like either drug stuff or a hit. And I think these people that said it was might know who did it then you're going to get a lot of pushback basically i mean look we okay so so pearl mutter miss miss pearl mutter herself very clearly laid out with what we already felt which is that it definitely exhibits signs of ritual now is that part of the staging by someone who had some knowledge of such things or is it authentically that's what it was it's hard to say, but but the signs there, I mean, I don't think Pearl Mutter can be discounted at all. I read it very, very well. But I do believe that there's this element of drug world. So, like, how do you put both of those together? You know, how do you take the, the gang, white nationalist, yeah. you know, ritual <clears throat> look to this, but but somehow... <laughs> How is it a connection to a drug world or, or is it a is it like a du- I've said it before. Is it a double cover up you know, or a double setup like you're setting up well, Logan and the Odinus? I don't really know. OK, but let's talk about a way you can do that. Um, if the let's say the the Benlanders, that's what I call them. They they call themselves the Benlanders Social Club. They like to go to these things like. You know, go to like protests in Washington D.C. You know these other white national, white nationalist, white supremacist events. Um, that requires money, and you know they're any kind of activities they do, they want money. You know, and and that's pretty much what everybody wants is money. So they could probably, you know, possibly be involved in either drug manufacturing, drug selling, all you know, everything. Um, and the guy, the reason. See, you have uh, the the fire, which you know gets out of control. Four people are killed. Then you have the granddaughter of the woman who appraised the house six weeks before the fire is one of the murder victims. Then you have the other murder victim is dating Brad Holder's son. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then where the drug angle comes in is. That's why Carroll County, the cops, won't press because they were probably told during the interviews, oh, yeah, you remember that cool 50000 I gave you to keep your mouth shut about that shipment? Mm-hmm. You know, so they don't want to arrest the real guys that did it because those guys, you're opening a lot of doors there. You're digging up a lot of snakes. And I think, yeah. I think everybody in Carroll County is like this. Bad guys, good guys, just like that. And I think well, that's why this all yeah. happened. So we can say, okay, so so tying things together, here's the interesting thing I think about what Rick was saying is that, you see, from, from an, a 30,000 view, all of this is absolutely solid. Like, there is a drug connection to this crime, whether or not our theory is correct or not, because Derek German was a major drug dealer. And... Half the people 
in the in his circle were selling for him. So he's the father of one of the victims. So there it is. That's your drug connection there. Now doesn't even the, the people that hate the patties the most, they're all swarming with that stuff too. And then there's a lot of peaceful overlap between a lot of those people where they want they all want the case to be buried and over. I noticed that too. The ones that are like the most cordial, peaceful, they're all they're all like, Yeah, we're in agreement. Uh it should be over. But even with Stevenson too, whether it's connected or not, the baseline why they think it might be connected is there is um, a lot of drug. It's drugs. It's not cyber crap or stuff. You know, snuff stuff. Uh, snuff stuff. Either or, any of that crap. Um, or truckers. Oh, there's truckers on both. It's not that. It's drugs. You know. And then that would make sense. Like Rick was saying, why Delphi wanted that side. Indiana side wanted that shit shut down so fast because it does open more doors uh, that we don't know about. And then it's like, who do you think was more upset that Stevenson's and Delphi were connected for a time? Uh, you think it was like Indiana side or Kentucky side? Kentucky wasn't upset. They're the ones that like brought it up basically. Right. So it was Indiana side. So yeah, they just want the thing to be wrapped up. But at the same time, there's cronies on both sides that kind of gave away the game by how aggressive uh, their counter reaction was to certain uh, news coming out or certain people uh, saying certain things, trying to, you know, mauling sleuthers that weren't even from criminal activity or whatever, just mauling them to bits when they came on the case. And that's where, you know, yeah, a lot of the anger comes at with uh, the police and stuff. They're not warning. It's like they're not, it's a public beach. You're saying it's a public beach, but they're not warning people that there's like shark inf infestation and drug needles in the water. So people are getting mauled and stuff. And then they're telling people, no, that didn't happen. You're out of your mind. The beach is good and beach is almost closing anyway. So, you know, even if you're right, go fuck yourself. So it's like, that's what they've been doing. And it's like, no, nah, dude, we're just spearing sharks now, dude, pretty much. We're in the, out in the open, too. And and you could, we'll deny it happened, too, when it happens, you know. So, like, that's pretty much where, where things are going. But, um, yeah, I think more, more, the whole thing, dude, it's not about, like, tit for tat going back with people. It's more, um, like, good information is more free to come out after uh, trial regardless of what happens pretty much you oh know? well this is a catastrophe yeah well that that's you know um what do you call it rick i forget the uh I forget the term uh somewhat of a catastrophe that people have the um jeez man i'm tired but uh but you know this is like a a, a really it's it's a it's a, a catastrophe of sorts uh, everything's coming to a head and regardless, no matter things are going to come to the surface now, now, bec because it's all been brought to a head with this approaching trial. Um, but back to what Rick was saying, I wanted to say that there's another connection here too, which is, which is also solid that, you know, whether or not, uh, what Rick's theory is, is correct or not. It's, it is correct that, um, insurance fraud or flora or insurance, you know, also plays into this because you have uh, you have the fact that uh, the grandparents of one of the victims did appraise the house that burned in flora and uh, whether or not that just with all of these things, whether or not they tie directly to the person murdering both girls at that instant. I cannot say what well, we can't say necessarily, but I don't think we can say, but, but these realities exist. It's like I was saying about the town, you know, or the, the area. It's like, we know that all these parties, there's a lot of underworld shit among all these parties. So it, yeah. it almost appears to me that these poor girls are the victims of the underworld. You know, that's what it is in my opinion, because there's a lot of crime and all of the, all of the surrounding people surrounding these girls. And, uh, if they end up victimized as part of that. But remember, the cops, remember how the mafia worked, okay? Per certain cops strategically placed would be on the take and would be protecting mafia. So how? Well, they would look out, they would turn the other cheek or turn an eye or, or whatever, turn their backs. But also, let's say if they got calls 
certain calls would be routed to those particular officers or that particular department. So they know, oh, if we get calls about these people, you know, then we have to send that to Mullen or whatever. Right. And so by doing things that way, yes, you can have corrupt cops in particular spots or places that are in on all of this underworld and benefiting from it and protecting it, allowing it. And they're nested within the larger department. And that's exactly how the mob functioned for years, so very successfully. Um, okay. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not like a new concept. It's, it's tried and true. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's just basically criminal underworld. What's up, uh, New Day? Thank you for the five yeah. sticker. Must say thank you. Okay, I'm kind of losing track of the chat. I apologize. We're getting a <laughs> no, conversation. So I apologize if we overlook you, but entertain yourselves. Okay, so. I mean, that's our big hurdle right now. I feel like um, uh, people will probably be calmer as a first step, just um, them admitting that it's a criminal organized crime, you know, type of deal. Uh, a case as organized crime in nature. We haven't even passed that hurdle yet, you know, forget about finding the right people. They've done it more so over on other, you know, cases and stuff that, and they kind of done it by a lot of the POIs beforehand too, um, before Alan's arrest, but we haven't even passed that hurdle yet, you know, and a lot of people, they don't, they're more aggressive on uh, that hurdle not being passed than Alan going down or, you know, the wrong person going down, the right person being caught, whatever. They don't, they don't want that um, addressed at all. Like they just like, it's a wrap. Let's make it make it go away basically you know mm-hmm. yeah no matter what so those same people let's say alan does he gets convicted guilty and everybody's like okay so low and over no criminal nature stuff and then like a week later they're like actually yeah we're still we still might arrest somebody else for this or that in relation to delphi they're, those people will flip the fuck out i guarantee well, it dude remember what i told you today alex when i said okay imagine the end of this this whole trial here imagine Alan is, whether uh, Alan is convicted or or imagine he's set free, okay, this is like uh, acquitted. What if the tip line stays open? What do you do then? It would have to, wouldn't it? I mean... (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. You know, if they say that it wasn't him, then they got to keep looking. Yeah, and what if he's convicted and it stays open? Because he only played a yeah. part. Right. Yeah. I mean, this, this shit, I, I think that's, that's the, the, the thing that um, this young lady here, who is it? Brutally honest said, I never thought this crime was a one per- person job. Well, that's, that's where I must confess. Uh, I get stuck because from, I've never did. You know, when I thought it was a one person crime, when I saw the stupid Gray Hughes uh, described the bridge guy doing uh, running the girls across the creek. But once I thought about it for more than a day, uh, five years ago, I I could no longer. I mean, I just once I gave it the tiniest bit of thought, I just thought there's absolutely no way because because I thought of teenagers, and you know I've taught teenagers in school settings, and I had a teenage son. And one thing I know about teenagers, they're fit. They can run without getting winded. They're not going to just, I mean, even if you have a gun on them, like, like she mentions, you might have a gun on them. There's not going to be dead silence. Okay. Somebody's going to scream. Something's going to happen to set off alarm bells. Mm -hmm. And you have neighbors all around. Any of you been out there, you know that there's water and sound carries over water and there's neighbors everywhere. Okay. Oh yeah. When I have been there, There was one time when uh, the wife and I were there and we were walking the dogs and there was uh, there was a family with some kids playing in the creek and they were under the bridge in the creek playing. We were almost back to the mirrors lot and we could hear them playing as day down there splashing and giggling and stuff. I mean, it anything that comes down along that water is going to carry and you're going to be able to hear it. You know, and, and another thing that I, one of the biggest things, uh, Greeno says it all the time, you know, well, the openness have been clear. And they say they have alibis. But we have seen that Elvis Fields and 
Johnny Messer and Rod Abrams, their alibis didn't check out. Then you have uh, Pat Westfall. His alibi was he was at home. We don't know whether they checked with neighbors to verify that. We don't know whether they checked cameras around there, you know, ring, ring doorbells or anything that could have proven that he didn't leave the house or whatever. And then they say, well, Brad Holder was at work. Yeah, that's true. At the time that they say the murders happened. But the murders well, happened they say exactly, they did. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. notice now, what has been a consistent theme from law enforcement on this? No one's been cleared. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Neither the family. So with that sort of guidance from law enforcement, what do they expect people to think? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me, you guys ready for another uh, really mind blowing theory here? Or story? Yeah. From yeah, yeah. I mean, from the uh, internets. All right. Here's one. This is called In Plain Sight, also from uh, the wonderful world of Reddit. <laughs> I stumbled across... Okay, so let me back you up to set context for this. So this is in... Um, this is the day of the murders. I stumbled across this live feed after the girls were found. Okay, so here... Okay, sorry. This is the day they are allegedly found the 14th of February, 2017. It's a live feed this person stumbles across. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I've done some investigating. I found two other people who personally witnessed this live stream and told me themselves they personally witnessed it. I believe it's on Facebook. It was a person saying they were there when the girls were attacked. He said he didn't do anything to stop it because he was a kid too and he was afraid the same thing would happen to him. He was not from Delphi. The killer had picked him up and they drove at least an hour before arriving at a huge farm. He did not know where he was, but said he needed to get out of there because the bodies were found and the place was going to be crawling with cops. He said the person who did this would never be caught because no one would think he was capable, but he is. Said the guy would be hiding in plain sight. I've not been able to find the thread again. It has been deleted. I contacted the investigators and FBI early on and told them what I found. No one has contacted me or ever brought it up again. What do you think? Hoax? Maybe the kid ended up missing too. Anyone else heard anything like this? Years have gone by and still no person held responsible for the Delphi murders. This was three years ago. I was looking back and wanted to point something out. My opinion at that time was it was a young man who was saying he was there. However, I think it's more likely that this was a teenage girl and it was her boyfriend who did this. Gay Bellis was arrested the day after the murders on an unrelated charge. He was picked up in Delphi with a teenage girl who was listed as a runaway, his girlfriend. As I mentioned before, the kids said they had been away from home for a few days. Makes sense now, just wanted to point this out. He said the guy wanted company. He, she said they were picked up by the guy and drove about an hour to a large farm. When asked who the guy was, he didn't give a name, but did say they weren't sure where they were and needed to get out of there. It was about the same time they had found the bodies, but hadn't identified them yet. I live in Las Vegas and didn't know much about the case, so when I stumbled across this feed, I didn't really know what I was looking at. My original search was for Liberty Tax Service. The person had been talking to a woman and a man in this feed. He was talking about the girls and how the guy attacked them. Someone asked him, why didn't you do something? He said, because I'm just a kid too. I was afraid the same thing would happen to me. Then it was mentioned that the bodies were found and the kid says, I got to get out of here. This place is going to be crawling with cops. One of the others asked where he was and he didn't know. He said he had just met the guy and they drove for about an hour before they arrived at, this, at his location, which was some kind of farm. He wouldn't give info on the guy's name or his own. Honestly, he seemed like he was impressed by the way the guy controlled the two girls. Like he said something like, that guy was awesome. Wish I had paid more attention. But like I said, I was unaware of its importance until later when I tried to find the feed. It was gone. The only other thing the kid said that stands out clearly is that he hadn't been home in a couple days and wondered if anyone was looking for him. He figured the guy had used him to gain the girl's trust. 
because he's a kid and he said they never going to catch the guy no one would even think he was capable able to do what he did but he is he will be hiding in plain sight i did talk to the fbi and reported it early on within two weeks of the murder it took me a minute to decide if it was worth reporting like you i don't know if this was a hoax i gave them the info and figured they would decide now i've been with a contact uh, in contact with a woman who says her daughter was picked up on February 13th by four men in a white car and gives their names. That's Megan Allen and Tina Rodell. They were going to the Monon High Bridge before noon. She had such a bad feeling about these guys that she took a picture of the vehicle and the plate on the car and contacted the police department. Tobe Lesenby, actually. Later, her daughter called and was in the cemetery. That's Megan Allen. It wasn't until the 15th that her daughter made it home. She had been drugged and raped by the men who picked her up. She was a teenager, and the police department was called. I wonder if it could have been the, her daughter that was in the conversation I saw. If this is, in fact, a true story, then it's possible the men who picked her up had something to do with the murders. Okay. There's more, but I think I'll drop it there. I think I'll drop it. No, let me go to another page. Okay. Let's go to the last page of this. I saw a conversation between three people on February 15, 2017. A kid was saying he, she was there when the girls were attacked. Read my original post, which we just did. It didn't make sense why the killer would bring someone that could be a witness, commit a murder, and then just let them go. Sounded crazy, like a hoax or something. But I've also felt that it was important. Five years ago, there was a woman in one of the Delphi groups who made some comments about some men and her daughter, so I called her recently to get the story. Her story could explain the conversation I found, and it makes more sense to me now. Look up Tina Bogard, Kokomo Crew. So, boom, let's drop this. Yeah, so any thoughts from the chat? Chat, if you witness that live stream, please let one of us know, because like I said, I've already contacted two pe gotten contacted by two people who say that they did witness that live stream and it was serious looking. Okay. So yeah, that's another third party possibility. Yeah, I, I do remember hearing some of that stuff um, a couple of years back. But I wasn't really, I mean, I wasn't sure, I wasn't, it was hard to follow at the time. I didn't really have as much information as I could have had about it. Yeah, well, I'm sure law enforcement could track that username and figure out who that person is and uh, also call me and get the name of the people that uh, have told me they personally witnessed it. Mm -hmm. And they could probably find out who the person was on the other side of that live stream. <laughs> yeah, I saw some people... Uh... Tina Rodell's sister of Christy Martin, who was arrested with Derek German. Is uh which which time? Because Derek was arrested several times. It was the last time. Tina Rod oh, I see. Tina Rodell's sister of Christy Martin, who was arrested with Derek German. Um, see, Christy was one of Derek's biggest sellers. He was uh supplying her for many years until she got busted. Yeah. I've heard the name before. Uh, I know I've definitely heard Tina Rodell before. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it before. I, w I will say, man, um, so all those, um, yeah, the, the most hardcore, like, criminal people on the case uh, hovering over it, they it's almost like they had a similar goal as us to get the police to acknowledge um it was uh, criminal in nature, but almost like for bragging rights. But once, it, it, if it if it's that way where it starts to hone in on real shit, then it's like show's over. Alan did it solo, solo. And another thing I've noticed too, I'm sure you guys have noticed, um, when a new a new happening happens in in the case or whatever, um, I've seen sleuthers like argue the most over who was honed in on the drug aspect of the case. Like, Oh, that they stole my work. It's my research. And Oh, he got that from me, blah, blah, blah. And I will say like a lot of that, um, you know, drug lore or whatever that came on earlier in the case, that's basically what led me to, you know, do the stuff that's still pinging after. But 
you know, like I told Prof, it's like we're not going to be right on everything. Um, but, um, you know, if, if something pans out in the future, which I think it may, then that kind of, um, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff uh, in hindsight gets uh, becomes important again, you know, and we don't even know what that may be yet. But, um, yeah, you don't really see people fighting for uh, who, who was uh, on to it's a solo and non non drug world murder. They don't fight over credit for that or who gave who that information even you know it's weird too uh uh, you know supposedly there's a shit ton of people that knew ra before i'm not even talking about who you think i'm talking about i'm talking about others like nobody nobody's really fighting that aggressively over that credit and i think the reason it is is because um yeah i think i think the drug stuff it kind of leads credence to uh it being drug in nature because if it wasn't then people would be fighting more hardcore for that credit like for instance you you and me rick if we honed in alan it's it's a killer by himself most people in their nature it's uh you're gonna fight for it hard and even the ones i see like we all know like uh lilith um simon wright even myself supposedly and even paul holes right for who might have tipped in or let made the tip that led alan on accident or purpose whatever you don't see it's not that aggressive uh, the one who that killed that uh, the guy that did that one letter to goal, he was kind of aggressive for a bit, but oh, it's uh, not as aggressive as you would expect because I think in the yeah. in the back of their heads they're still confused at what's going on, kind of like me. And it's like, yeah, this may be some drug shit. So it's like yeah. you're kind you kind of you're kind of like, uh, yeah, I may have got him caught or this or that, but you know, there we don't I don't know what I'm dealing with here type of thing, basically. Well, on a normal cold case where it's like solo happenstance murder, people will be like tooth and nail, like, yeah, I tipped him in, I got him arrested, like, where's my reward money? Like hardcore, right? But I think that's why everybody's like, this this could be radioactive. I don't know what I'm dealing with right now. And that's why uh that's kind of why it is the way it is, I think, man. To be honest, that's why a lot of people that knew about RA before us don't want credit for it. That's why the ones that did supposedly tip them in or led to them, whatever, they're still like kind of waiting and watching and not tooth and nail because they, they do suspect what we all suspect, basically. And they're not sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like some multiple person crap, you know? So it's dangerous. It becomes dangerous to do that type of behavior on a case like that. That's why they, they don't want to do that, you know? Yeah, so it makes sense to me. I mean, shit, dude. But uh, yeah, if I if I had a guess, realistically, dude, if I use pe- full on pessimism or whatever, I think yeah, ISP is probably going to strong arm Stevenson's to close up uh, right after arrest, probably, and they'll be like, yeah, you can still you know take tips over there, whatever. That's your own case, but like, don't mention uh, Delphi ever again. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure they're gonna do something like that. I wouldn't be surprised, man. And like they might even make him come out with another correction or something. Like absolutely, we thought it was a possibility. We uh, crossed all our T's and you know all that crap, and then they're gonna shut that down. I, that's what I think is gonna happen. And then um, I don't think anybody's getting gonna get arrested on that case um, soon. I don't think so. But um, yeah, the fact they were doing all that weird stuff, dude, it just hanging back it, it's almost like the other stuff i was talking about trucker stuff dark web stuff all the stuff that's baked into the cake way later not the local stuff it kind of just mm-hmm. pings back as a like a reflection on delphi that yeah it's organized crime in nature basically that's like the main reason it's important it's not really as important for finding the killer you're not going to find the killer like on the internet basically you know it's right. going to be yeah. like you know it's, it's the way you're going to find the killer is like if there is a, another person involved is diagnosing uh, the problem as a correct problem first. And we haven't even gotten there yet. That's what I'm saying, you know? So yeah, we're, we're, we're closer than we were um, ever. <laughs> I think so. You know? <laughs> so it's pretty good. Yeah. This much closer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once more information comes out, which it will, then it's going to be even more closer. And it may even be a point in the future where, uh, if there was another person at the scene or other people, um, they 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 either die and then it gets ratted out with proof, basically, or they they get ratted out and if the cops don't do anything, like 
uh, they just, yeah, they basically get street justice or exposed all over the place. And, you know, that's not my job or whatever, but uh, yeah, there's the, the thing I get hung up on is uh, the feds. So why are the feds, they kind of dance around with the, the cops on this case. And sometimes they act compromised and we all could figure what that, uh, why they would be compromised. And then other times they act like it's almost like a toxic relationship or something. And it's similar yeah. with Kentucky and ISP. It's like sometimes they're saying stuff that totally goes against what they said. And other times they're lock in foot with them. So other times like, oh, we found nothing. That's in a good spot. Oh, yeah. By the way, we're still vetting Delphi. Oh, never mind. Um, we're, we already that's old news. We investigated. By the way, uh, you know, summer 2024, we're still vetting Delphi. So uh, FBI kind of yeah. has that toxic back and forth with um uh, ISP and, and Delphi as well, I feel like, man. And uh, the only thing that, only reason that could be is if it's an organized uh, crime type case, because you wouldn't have that haggling, bartering situation over cases that are not that nature. Like, if it's just a Joe Schmo that hurt his wife or sister and it's all familial drama, you don't, that's not up for grabs to be uh, bargained with like that at all. So that, that, you know, kind of leads me to believe that, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a case what we're saying, you know? Yeah, pretty much, you know, you know, I, um, what Cindy's saying here actually makes a whole lot of sense because I've talked about this on the channel before, you know, for someone that managed to elude the police for what, five years, almost six years, Working at CVS where he sees everyone in town. <laughs> yeah, Richard, Richard Allen was one of the yeah. stupidest or luckiest guys ever because you're going to kill two girls at a park you know, or at a trail where you, you know, you've been there before, you know the area. Um, you live not too far from there. You're home by yourself that day. You know, even if you don't want to take them to your home, why would you just park way back here walk down there and take them out in, some, you know, right out in the open somewhere where you could have easily parked at the cemetery, walked them to the car and taken them somewhere else. It just doesn't. It doesn't add up. It doesn't. No. I mean, I agree, Cindy, that was an amazing observation. That I, I thought it in my head fleetingly from time to time, but I've never really verbalized it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, to to think that the guy is so ruled by his psychotic passions that he would go out there and pass several people and uh, not give any thought to how he's going to get to his car, which is parked far away and all of this stuff, which doesn't match any of the vehicles descriptions by any of the witnesses, but uh, the whole other story. But and then he's going to go out in the most risky place possible, which is on that high bridge with those railroad ties dangerously <laughs> set apart, uh, very high in the air, uh, five stories, six stories up, where you're definitely going to fall and die if you fall. For him to decide suddenly on a whim and with all of that risk, oh, now's the time I'm going to be overruled by my psychotic, murderous uh, passions. And uh, I'm going to take these two very capable teenagers who are out there already on dry ground. Off of, they were really off of yeah, the bridge. They were off of the bridge. So they could have easily ran straight to the Weber home. Mm -hmm. So it just, nothing adds up here. But, you know, what, Cindy, just, you, you triggered me to go to a side note. I didn't. Didn't intend on that. I'm, I want to bring up another crazy story for you guys, but let's say who played at posing victims. Maybe the play was part of the it's only role play angle that was either always intended to be subverted to next event, real crime, or someone else took that initiative. You see, I believe there's two parts to this crime. I've always believed. I believe at first it's murderous rage. And then I think then it's having fun. It's my opinion. Let me see that. Okay. Um, it's crazy, man. I mean, um, damn. Yeah, I think uh, 
in broad daylight. Yeah, thank you, Cromley. Yeah, some good stuff's going to come soon. That's why it's almost like, uh, as far as getting it addressed, a lot of things addressed that need to be addressed, um, you know, that all three of us here have personal investment with as far as, like, experiences, our experiences with the case and stuff that is abnormal compared to any other case we've touched because I've done Katie Jeanette. I didn't get fucked with hard looking at Katie Jeanette or, well, I didn't spend that much time on it, or uh, uh, Chelsea Smalls or uh, Great Ben Bakery Murder. There was, like, there was no, like, weirdos, like, scoping me out, doing a lot of the crazy uh, high-octane stuff they did, you know, but on Delphi there was. That's what makes me think, and you guys all, you know, both of you too for speaking on different yep. things. Um, we agree. But, it's the gang stalking that points to, like, weird shit. To me, to me, yeah, and the foreigners don't help things. I don't know who like brought them in, dude. Like, all the people from like your uh Serbia and stuff, and, and and there's more than one. That's the thing, dude. They're all over the place, and then they're all over, yeah. I've noticed, <laughs> and every nook and cranny, dude. Even um, yeah, even Stevenson's, dude. And and um, man, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot. There's hey, a lot look, to go Sun- over, you know? Sunflower Soul has a funny-ass statement. But Richard Allen committing this crime like he's never seen an episode of Law & Order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, Brutaliana says, is I've always believed it was highly unlikely for one man to take two girls. I also believe they were taken somewhere else before they were ultimately found on the 14th. This place had to be nearby. Yeah, that's what I believe is called the shack. But it could have not been a shack. It could have been any type of other place. I have Apophis. I do agree with this. Okay, so I'm totally, I'm totally suspicious of all the witnesses, all the family members, and all the time frame. Time frame. So yeah. I don't really believe much of the witnessing around this case, and because of that, it's possible that the time frame is completely off and fabricated. And then there's the staging, like right, Indy Cindy. Uh, stage the f- stage and photo the whole thing to pass around to your buddies. I mean, yeah, we've legend. heard more. Like you don't, if a guy, um, uh, let's say, let's say two kids they got killed by their cousin on accident, and then for years nobody, um, nobody solves a murder, or becomes a big murder. You're not going to hear um, a bunch of druggies all over the place bragging. Yeah, so and so they said they had a picture of the bodies and blah blah like. That's not, it, it's happened too frequent on this case, you know? And that do, there doesn't need to be like a lure mechanism or any of that crap for it. It just like, that's one of those other things. It just screams of, um, uh, yeah, organized crime for sure, man. And the trucker thing too, even coming up as much as it did, even the ex military thing for the other suspect. And, um, yeah, that other suspect thing, man, the whole, like, reddish-brown hair, you know, that that guy. Who's the guy all in more black. Violent. I know yeah. Rick will remember that, the guy in all black. You know, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Versus for, the bridge guy. Yeah, yeah, the police to be talking about him like he's way more violent even after the fact, like months after arrest. That's like, it, it trips me out, man. And it, I don't know, man. I don't know where where that guy came from or uh i just know he's still alive because if he wasn't still alive there wouldn't be all this craziness that we've seen so he he might be sitting like at at, a, at his grandma's house or whoever's house he, i feel like there he's on stand down orders for now but he's still alive for sure and i think he's still in the usa for sure i think yeah, no matter what. It's not like they shipped him off to Mexico or something like that. You know, I think he's oh, still... Oh, this uh, guy, I bet this guy yeah. is still around Carroll County. Yeah. Okay. I Let me, uh, guess, yeah. let's read the last. I got one more weird-ass story from the interwebs. Okay. All right. Becky Patty knows the truth. Wolfpack Motorcycle Club members. Have you seen this, Rick? Yes, I have, yeah. Have? Okay. I'll go quick. Very interesting. Okay, it says... <laughs> It says these several guys were at the bridge. The sketches prove they were there. Well, I don't agree with that necessarily. Sketches don't prove anything. But why did it take so long for these sketches to become public? It's my belief that the guys in the sketches kidnapped Ab- Libby and Abby and Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, Johnny Messer, Elvis Fields, etc. returned them to the place where their bodies were found, meaning they dumped the bodies. So this person's theory is, is the guys in the... Uh, 
Frank's memorandum dumped the bodies. Right. This that's why Brad Holder has been so brazen with his on Facebook. That's why their alibis check out. Johnny Messer and Billy Messer are the links that put every one involved together. The girls died because of Becky Patty and Derek German's actions. Becky Patty and Derek German turned the motorcycle club members into the police for battery charges. The girls were killed at an alternate location, so why bring them back to the high bridge? Not why not dump or bury their bodies elsewhere? Because it was meant to send send a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one day. Oh yeah. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Okay. On the day of the murders, coincidentally, David Jones and Jonathan Jew had their pretrial hearing at Carroll County Courthouse on 11 3 2017. Scott Hamill allegedly commits suicide. One day later, Robert Ives retired. Did Nikki Lee, Nikki Boy, Slick Nick McClellan get the real killer off? Did Judge Diener recuse himself because he knew the truth? Is this the reason everyone is so hell bent on making Richard Allen the scapegoat? Are they all trying to hide Becky, Patty, and Derek German's dirty little secret? Is this the reason Becky, Patty made the statement, they've got our girls? She knew, she knows, the, the entire family knows. Want to know the parties involved with the Wolfpack Motorcycle Club battery case? Research Curtis Faust, Mark Delgado. Were they set up because they threatened to expose the truth? Is this why Robert Eyes retired? Is this why Judge Diener retired? Nick McClellan, Attorney J David Jones, Benjamin Diener, Judge, Kurt Judge Curtis Faust, Judge uh, Sheriff Joe Blesenby, Investigating Officer Robert Eyes, Prosecutor Mark Delgado, Attorney. Um, John Weaver. Do you remember this audio? That must be the John Weaver audio. Well, John Weaver, who knew where the girls were located before law enforcement knew, <laughs> was the next door neighbor of Richie Everett. Well, how is Richie Everett? Is is he one of the members of this gang then? Because John Weaver uh, was alleged by some officer in the uh, radio traffic transcripts to have seen right. the girls in the water. I'm utterly disgusted that Becky Patty and the entire Patty German family can sit back and watch an innocent man go to prison when they know the truth. And lastly, nobody's blaming the family. However, they can't get away from the fact that they've got all that crystal meth in the family. Daddy Derek's friends list is like a blueprint to every crystal meth addict in Ukraine, Carroll County. Fact. Still lives at home. Cody Patty has four DUIs before he's 30. Becky Patty's side of the family, uh, Michaela Hartman, and all of her brothers are felons and criminals and pill popping scumbags. Take the double homicide out, and what you got less left? White trash with money. No, I will say, um, yeah, the the Patties they were nice as far as letting me leave the case. I got no issue with them, and the Voorhees family is way more scumbag and then all <laughs> bad stuff than Patty family by far, dude. Like no comparison. That's why there's only like three of us or four of us left, dude. On this, I'm no relation to really Voorhees. Because our Voorhees side is like way worse than what's going on over there. But uh, the people that did mess with me the most leaving the case were like rabid petty haters big time. And the thing is, they kind of, they all, what I noticed, what they, they'll switch around to being uh, petty lovers or whatever. Their goal is to keep um, the case from being. Uh, organized crime realistically like it could be organized crime like I said if it's a bullshit story of like some dude at McDonald's or uh, whatever like some no name that's all fine and good but once you hit on some real names that's when the teeth come out and that's when nope solo over talent blah blah like night and day difference dude it changes up that's when you stop hearing you know stories of bluetooth this and f farmhouse that and it just can, they all consolidate together and it's like, nope, it's over. It's done. You know, you touched on some real stuff and shows over like we wanted bragging rights without, uh, you know, those doors opening like that. that that's like kind of thing you were talking about, Rick. Once you once you hit on a, something that could open a lot of doors, that's when um, <laughs> that's when the aggressive like counter reaction, you know, comes out, you know. Big time. But yeah, you could you could sit there and have all those crazy fantasies all day, you know, those uh, theories or whatever about um, this or that. And they're cool with it. But yeah, the moment something real happens to then they, it's like aggressive consolidation and pushback for sure. But um, yeah, they're not. A, that's the thing, dude. It's like um, 
yeah, there's a lot of freedom that's going to come after um, trial as far as information uh, just being fucking let out the open, you know. So it's going to be pretty good, you know, I think. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're in a good time right now, man. We don't have too much longer, you know. I yeah, let's say it. trial gets delayed. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Rick. I, I don't th- I think it's going to happen. I really do. Um, yeah. But I, I've heard, uh, now I, I've not been able to verify, but I've heard a rumor that the 315 call by Derek to Libby's phone was not true, that he never called her phone. He just started walking, looking for her and everything, and that he didn't call her phone until like after 3.30 or something like that. I, I don't know if it's true or not. Well, you know what's funny? When I did my breakdown uh, last show or two, 3.30 was a crucial time as well as 3.58. And it's funny because I always suspected, why are they trying to put him at Wilson Bridge at 3.11? You know, Mm -hmm. they continuously tried to push this narrative to explain his presence at Wilson Bridge at 3.11. And, uh, you know, basis of my theory involves Wilson Bridge. So I I like the fact that those things line up, but... Yeah, it's yeah, like it's by, crazy, three, by 358, all hell was breaking loose, you know? Yeah. Oh, I just, uh, I had that highlighted comment. I meant to read it. She said, where is it? Indy Cindy said, how many freaking people? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. She's verbal. She's, Indy Cindy, <laughs> listen, uh, I appreciate your comments. I saw that you're a criminal justice person. Thank you very much for being here. First time here, maybe second time. Thank you. I do keep the comments coming. Let's see. If this case isn't solved for five years, then you release more info to the public, not lock it down even tighter. That doesn't make sense. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. So why don't we have cameras in this courtroom? That is like everything points to the case. It's like we don't have to be right on who did it or who didn't. It's like that's the main hurdle to cross is uh like all their actions kind of point that yeah it's it, it's organized crime in nature dude uh, yeah and like all all across the board even the way uh yeah outside agencies handle it and it's just making sense dude and we don't know exactly like all the motivations or how it was carried out whatever we just know how the case is being handled it's being handled as that one of those type of cases even if you fully believe like full corruption and police had a hand in it like controlled demolition style or any direction with that on people helping or not helping with that scenario um yeah it's look it's looking that way like in all directions to be honest dude (laughs) for sure man so yeah yeah it's i think i think we will pass that hurdle uh probably by the end of this year because that's where the the wind comes from even if uh, uh yeah trial gets delayed people uh, we're on a more honed in path now on like what's more important. A lot of like stuff's getting scrubbed out and uh, yeah, we're honing in on some good stuff right now, I think. So uh, yeah, I think, let me say yeah. that uh, tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen, was supposed to be a debate. OK, so initially we conceived that uh, Snay and Alex would debate and um, oh, you yeah, know, you would have won. Gave, <laughs> <we gave it laughs> won. Yeah, <laughs> they would have won, obviously, but. But uh, but we gave it some thought. I gave it some thought. And what I thought was like, you know what? The thing is, our differences are small here. Very small. Yeah. Okay, because basically, we're basically all saying we really don't know that much because what's – honestly, what's released from about Richard Allen is so minimal and so nothing burger that um, – uh, I, I believe out of everything presented, the only thing compelling would be confessions. But then you have to put on top of that the fact that he was held in Westville for a long ass time. He was threatened and abused and medic forcibly medicated. And when you put that all together, then the confessions have to kind of be pushed to the side. So it really leaves nothing. And the only thing I have is my aching suspicion that, uh, Possibly he could have been involved by having some tie to one or two of these people in some way where and that's where I stand. And like I said, you know, you know, Alex is more uh, leans more towards guilty. Rick, it leans more towards innocent. But um, Mm. but certainly. 
uh, the, the, there's really no need for debate because that's not what's what's even worthy of debate. What's, what's worthy of debate, uh, we we felt is, are there others involved in this? I think so. Yeah, and the grift and people think- talk about the YouTube grift, man, but like. You know, I, I am considered a confidential informant, but I work for free. Like, I work a pretty, like, crappy job to be. It's not crappy, crappy. I mean, it's, like, low-paying, basically. So I don't get paid to be an informant. I've never been paid to be an informant. I just tip in stuff like a regular sleuther. I, I was more on serial killer hunter stuff, and that's, like, most people see my work on other cases. That's where my mind's at. But just like everybody, yeah, everybody says there's, like, a YouTube grift on this case or whatever. What's been even mm-hmm. more strong after arrest, there's definitely like a huge informant grift. There's informants up the butt, up the wazoo on this case. And you wouldn't see that on a case that's not organized crime in nature. You would just not see that. Yeah. So if it's like somebody killed their cousin and that's what they suspected or show, shows over, you wouldn't have like freaking 50, 80 paid informants like, yeah, grifting on a case, you know, wreaking havoc, starting bullshit, like doing all this crazy shit. And um, it, 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 I think that grift's going stronger than the YouTube grift, in my opinion, <laughs> after arrest, dude. It seems that way, dude. And I'm kind of curious to see where they're going to go after. Are they going to – is it still going to be just, like, gatekeeping, making sure the, the case doesn't pass that bar of being retroactive, actively put as um, criminal, you know, in nature or whatever? And uh, they just want to keep it solo happenstance because, yeah, you just you just do not – like what's what's who's that guy? The Scott Peterson, Lacey Peterson. Is there like fifty paid informants like on, on that case after the fact? I don't think so, dude. Or even mm-hmm. Casey Anthony, or you don't see any of that, dude. But this case, it's like up the ass, dude. They're everywhere. Every every corner you go in, they're there, dude. And sometimes they're not even on YouTube or Facebook, but they'll like show up once in a while and just like saying odd shit, like you know, like show up to attack the ADL or SPL, whatever the hell it's called. And it's like, it's like they're, they're, um, they're, uh, they got to or something, you know, it's like, they're not feeling it. They're not feeling it, but they got to, to like keep their, uh, that type of status going or something, you know? So that's, I don't know. It kind of feels like that dude, to be honest. And they, they aren't serial killer hunter type informants dude, or like, you know, web sleuth people turned into, uh, confidential informants it's more like paid or like they got caught up you know doing some bad shit in relation to drugs or children and that's why uh they're here doing the shit they're doing you know that's what it feels like man you and i talked today how you know i agree with that like my basic vibe of this crime is that it's serial killer like and i said to you earlier that the thing is it doesn't have to be a, a serial killer means kills more than one you know uh but what I'm looking at is like, if you look at these bodies, it has the look of a serial killer's crime. Or I, I said to you that what else? What is a hitman? A hitman is a serial killer, right? So yeah, it, yeah. yeah. So it could be it could be like a hit. It you know, but whatever it is, if you when you look at it, it doesn't look like a first time crime of passion. And no, I'm, just, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Rick. This crime, the way the bodies were found, you know, um, as we said earlier, um, this was done to send a message. Somebody got the message. Trust me. And it just, we just had to figure out who it was the message was sent to, you know, and that would probably give us the people that did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got two victims, and both of them have families, so. You would start there. <laughs> um, I want to chime in with uh, this. Uh, Brutally honest has left some a couple awesome comments here, and I'll just uh, I'll quickly highlight them because I want to do one more thing before we call it a night. But uh, um, so brutally honest, where are you? Let's see. Brutally honest just just giving some good ass summary statements. Uh, the important other suspects, Brad Holder, Pat Westfall, Elvis Fields, all of these important interviews of these interesting people are conveniently deleted or supposedly on accident never recorded like WTF. Yes, not only that, uh, all of the family cell phone data that would be necessary to establish a timeline with digital forensics. 
Uh, the lying of the prosecution in their documents, yes. Lying about what the witnesses saw, yes. The clothing, the color, statements altered are adjudicated from muddy to now also add bloody. Yes, on purpose, leaving crucial info out. The list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So thank you very much. That pretty much sums up our whole argument, I guess. Uh, so we love these comments. Uh, thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, Connie says, what's up, Connie? You're a new, a new person. Uh, with all the deaths surrounding this case, how the judge, prosecutor, and law enforcement are pushing this to be R.A. Lone Wolf, uh, one has to wonder. Yeah. Or as Unified Command concluded, greater good trying to protect the public by not releasing info so they can, can't, since they can't practically protect the public or amateur flutes from, this, from the tentacles. Yeah, and, you know, that's the thing about it. If, if we're alleging that there are third parties out there, uh, that means that there are killers out there, and that means that uh, they might want to shut people like us up, which is pretty frightening. Oh, yeah. We got it from all directions, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, poor Adrian. Uh, I highlighted on my last show the, uh, the the types of threats Adrian has gotten, which uh, I suggest any of you haven't seen the last show featuring uh, In Light in the Dark, please go watch it. Uh, she gives a personal testimony about some of the uh, intimidation. That would explain when you ask most true crimers why they, they'll always say, no matter how much they hate Delphi or think it's insignificant, whatever that is, by far, like, the worst community they've ever been in on the Internet as far as um, toxicity and, and people not letting shit go or other people leave or just going crazy. It's, like, unpredictable, like, really unpredictable nature. And, um, and I think the reason being, yeah, it's because it is, um, yeah, an organized criminal type case uh larping is something else and then you have all these agitators from all over the place you know it's like they're they're I watching mean, the case for a reason you know basically you know yeah and we're not making that up i mean i i think i hope you guys hear alex like we're not making up the agitation i mean at a bare minimum if you're not going to believe anything else believe that we're not making up the agitation we've showed it to you and multiple times um, I think it must be Rick's bedtime because he just dropped off. Uh, old people tend to uh, yeah, fall asleep later, at the drop of a dime. So, uh, so our uh, our uh, elderly member member of the panel seems to have uh, perhaps passed out behind the screen. Uh, we, we know it's well past his bedtime. So, uh, uh, but he may wake up, uh, given that he has a couple dogs uh, wandering around the room. Uh, they may wake him up, lick his face or something. He might come in and say good night. But. Uh, until he does, let's. Uh, I I have a doc, a couple documents here in which I've placed some red rectangles. So let me just quickly read through these red rectangles exclusively and save us all the pain of reading the documents, um, because I wanted to sort of uh, head towards some backup. In other words, it's not just us speculating this. Um, you know, uh, it's not just others on Reddit or wherever uh, speculating. Uh, I'm trying to show you that, uh, I, as I did in the beginning with the videos of law enforcement speculating other third third parties, uh, even in the in the filings uh, in the Richard Allen trial or the case against Richard Allen, uh, there have been filings which also indicate third party perpetrators. So we're going to hit that up right now. Uh, Guys, I'm just joking about Snay. He, I think his battery died, but let's uh, let's look here. In said request, the defense detailed newly discovered evidence here and after called the Blotcher Report that suggests that the phone that was found at the scene where the victims of the murders were ultimately found on February 14, 2017, had actually been taken out of the area on February 13 before being brought back into the area at some point in time on February 14. Okay. Number five. This is important because law enforcement has maintained from the beginning of the case that the girls were murdered on February 13th and remained in place where they were found from the following day, where they were found the following day, never leaving the area where they were ultimately found. This new evidence, therefore, would show that the phone and the victims were taken outside of the area where they were ultimately found, but then brought back to the area at a later time. Well, that immediately means third party perpetrators. 
Eight, specifically, the defense received certain geofencing evidence that at least three persons were in or around the crime scene at the time the murders were allegedly taking place, according to law enforcement's timeline. And none of the owners of the phones have any connection to Richard Allen. This geofencing evidence would provide evidence of any of the following scenarios. Those persons walking, uh, these are three hypothetical scenarios that the uh, defense attorneys are laying out. Those persons walking with the phones are witnesses that would have observed the murders as they were taking place and none of them have identified Richard Allen. Or those persons walking with the phones were witnesses who observed nothing as the murders did not take place on the afternoon of February 13, 2023, but the victims were taken to the crime scene after the search was called off in the a.m., early a.m. of February 14th. Or C, those persons walking with the phones were participants in the murders. Said geofencing evidence was so important to somebody involved in the investigation that they created a map and plotted the movements of those persons, including movements that show at least one of those persons was within 60 to 100 yards of the crime scene at a time while the murders would have been committed according to law enforcement's own timeline. The phones, once again, had no connection to Richard Allen, allegedly. Furthermore, the map shows that the other two phones and the persons carrying those phones were in or around the crime scene between 1239. Now listen up. I have the maps. Between 1239 p.m. and 549 p.m., two individuals are crawling all around the crime scene. You get it? It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Okay. There's a flurry of activity is another way I've described it. Now, thanks for becoming a member, Connie. Uh, we're almost done with this. Okay. Thank you so much. I didn't mean th to have this page. <laughs> All right. Just skip this one. Okay. I think Rick's uh, experiencing technical difficulties. You guys who are here for Rick, don't leave. He's coming back. Okay. Um, on March... 13, 2024, Mr. Allen by counsel filed his third Frank's notice here after titled Frank's three based on evidence um, recently provided by the prosecution. Frank's three detailed the following information omitted from the search warrant. OK, so check this out. At least three persons were in or around the crime scene at the time the murders were allegedly taking place and none of the owners of the phones had any connection to Richard Allen. Okay. Let me, let me stop and say that I do believe that the phones are identified and that no, they're not a burner phone that Richard Allen purchased because the three users are identified. They are not Richard Allen. B, Purdue professor Jeffrey Turco wrote a report provided unified command that the markings on the bodies uh, made of sticks constitute an inscription inspired by Norse runes. Okay. At different times during the hearing, okay, this is from another document, although uh, I don't, you have to look at the bottom. Let me remove this. That's the document. De Defendant's supplemental submission regarding state's motion to eliminate 813-2024. Okay, I'll quote from the document. Number five in the document, at different times during the hearing, State of Indiana Prosecutor Nick McClellan spoke the following words as it relates to potential for third party culpability. Listen, this is still a very ongoing investigation. Our goal is to find anyone else who was involved in this heinous crime. That is the public interest to find anybody else involved and get justice for Abby and Libby. OK, so after the arrest of Richard Allen in the filings in the case against Richard Allen, McClellan states, our goal is to find anyone else who was involved in this heinous crime that is in the public interest to find anybody else involved and get justice. Okay, that implies third party culpability. Here's another one. We have good reason to believe that Richard Allen is not the only person involved in this case, that there may be other actors involved. That's why we left the tip line open. That's why we left the tip email open. Okay, that's pretty clear, is it not? This is after the arrest of Richard Allen in the filings in the case against Richard Allen. 
The question becomes, at least in the state's mind, is it more important to release details of the investigation to the public or more important to keep those confidential in order for the investigation to continue and to find anyone else that's responsible? It puts the best... Uh, the investigation in the best position possible to determine if anybody else was involved. It's in the best interest of the public that the investigation find anyone else involved. Okay. Number seven. Detective Holman's letter sought the sealing of the records for many reasons, including one important part, impertinent part being that the investigation is ongoing and fluid. Okay. The exhibit created by Investigator Mullen cited that the matter was still being actively investigated. Okay. Investigator Mullen went on to state that law enforcement was continuing to search and seek facts regarding information relating to Richard Allen and other potential suspects. Okay. Now, I believe that is our presentation. Now, uh, I'm getting a tip. I mean, a tip. All I ever think about is tips, Alex. Okay. Um, I'm getting a text from Rick, so let me see what's up with Rick. He says his battery died. All right, his battery died. Let's see if he's able to get that fixed. Um, all right. Well, Alex, you're kind of quiet there. I'm done with my uh, yapping. Yeah, I was on. I was on mute. I didn't realize. Oh, um, yeah, you were. There you go. Yeah, dude. Well, we could, until he gets back, we go through that stuff real quick uh, that I sent you earlier. Or, or you could save it. You could save it for, um, yeah, what you had in mind uh, down the road. It's, it's up to you. It's up to you. Heather says, Rick, uh, fast speed charger, quick. Let me see. Anything else here? <laughs> All right. I missed a bunch, but you know. Yeah, well, I have a pop that says they left the tip lines open to clean up loose ends. He's, re he's uh, sarcastically referring to uh, something we talked about in the last show, which is a reverse engineering of the tip line, which is, I believe, that they left – they left the tip line open in order to continue to get tips to see what they need to go fucking deal with to railroad Richard Allen all the way down into the ground. But that's my opinion. Uh, thank you, Connie. And thanks for becoming a member. We love our new members here. And hopefully you'll get some unique content. Periodically, I post that. Um, Heather says, hello. I didn't know you guys were on. Well, you miss Rick, Heather. So uh, hit the replay when we're done. Uh, we're going to be wrapping it up soon. Let's see. Hi, Adrian. Nice to be here. Great panel, says Hard Candy. 5.49 is when the initial searchers left to go to the police station. Remember, what else? They were not allowing people to go and search. Uh, they had this very strange operation where you go and rendezvous with the police at the uh, fire department first, and then everyone goes together. Kind of weird shit going down. Thank you, Cromley, $1.99 Super Chat. This is for Rick's new prepaid card. <laughs> no, he need, I think he needs a, call, a phone. Uh, he said that he said that his charger is – is uh, there's something frazzled with his charger, so he's, he's frantically trying to charge. But uh, let's see. Dude, in the meantime, yeah, you want to throw that stuff up? No, I think I'm good, man. I'll, well, let's save it for the <laughs> Halloween. Uh, oh, I got some announcements to make. Let me do that while Rick reconfigures. I just love when uh, Adrian's putting up the hearts for Heather and everyone's saying hello to Heather. Okay. Oh, Indy, Cindy, you guys got jokes tonight. What well, is Friday night? Can we get off the serious shit? I'm sure it died. Uh, maybe it randomly just stopped connecting to the cell tower. Yeah, speaking of the phone of one of the victims turning off magically at uh, 5 something p.m., you know, when the, when the uh, searchers left or whatever, and uh, magically turning on at 4.33 in the morning just in time to be found. Uh, so, 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 yeah, a lot, ladies and gentlemen, a couple announcements here. Um, one, Alex and I are going to do a, a, uh, a freaky Halloween spectacular for you guys in which we attack the absolute uh, freakish horror uh, 
aspect of uh, this case and the Stevensons and others, uh, including some of the gate killer stuff. Like, basically, we're going to go into Alex's dark mind and uh, and uh, exploit uh, the darkness for the uh, celebration of the uh, October season. So look forward to yeah, uh, that's some good stuff, man. Yeah, look forward to <laughs> look forward to Alex and I's yeah. uh, Halloween special extravaganza, and then um, another special announcement I have is that tomorrow will be a premiere of my uh, of a new uh, a new uh, a new blockbuster Delphi video that I've made. Uh, it's an hour long. You know, most of my little videos are on the shorter side, but uh, I've been working for a while on a new video. Uh, it's, I'm very excited to share it with you guys. It'll, I'll premiere it tomorrow. Uh, the title is Apocalypse Delphi. Uh, it's going to be chock full of receipts and also some very informa in, in, interesting information. So it'll be informative uh, and thought-provoking. And uh, I'll premiere that tomorrow. So keep a, keep a lookout for that premiere. Um, and like I said, it's an hour long. So be ready for a sit down for an hour and check it out and do some reading because you know there'll be screenshots included but also video clips so i spent a lot of time trying to make it nice for you guys so uh it's some receipts i haven't shown before and some that, uh, a few that i have and some footage that i haven't shown before and some that i have so it, it'll be a mixture of awesome stuff and it's uh that'll be tomorrow <laughs> in the daytime i'll premiere that for you guys to check out um while you're here do me a favor. Please go subscribe to Rick's channel. It's Delphi After Dark. All of you who are uh, new to Rick, go, go, go to subscribe to his channel. Um, don't subscribe to Alex's because I don't think he wants subs, but <laughs> he'll direct you when yeah. you want. Yeah. And do, do hit the like on the video. So on this, <laughs> this, this live stream. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you, Northern Story. Yeah, what should they should they subscribe to you or not, Alex? What should they do? Yeah, go ahead. You never know what I'll be putting up there in the future, man. I bet Rick is <laughs> all over town right now. Yes, so go subscribe to Weird Alex V. Okay, he's in the chat. Find him and go subscribe. Go subscribe to Dark Arts by Adrian. She's in the chat. Uh, there's another one. Uh, where is she? Has she left? It's getting too late for everybody. For all the <laughs> old folks. Um. I have Apophis. Go subscribe to him, her, it, the I. Um, go subscribe to Cromley. Uh, it's a new day. I'm trying to direct you to go subscribe to New Day. And uh, who else was here earlier that has a channel? Jeez, can't remember. But yeah, subscribe to some of the people. And... Uh, Alex's melting brain cremation story time is a banger. <laughs> oh, yeah. And hey, I got to bring my friend that worked with me there, dude, because we have a lot of crazy stories, man. But yeah, he's my, he's my best friend since high school. So we went through all that together. It was crazy, dude. We were running that place. But um, yeah, I'm glad, I don't, I'm glad I didn't work there during COVID for sure, man. Because, uh, all the protocols and crap and dealing with um, like coroner's office. I would have not liked it. Everything would have taken like uh, extra time than it used to basically, you know, but um, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do. We're a uh, nice community here. Thank you. Hard candy. Yeah, I agree. The chat is away, most awesome. This is the most awesome chat. on. YouTube. Yeah. It's been chill, man. It's been really chill. Uh, there's the link. Uh, I mean, uh, the link. Uh, Rick's Rick's coming back, y'all, for a moment. We're gonna we're gonna all say good night anyway, cause uh, yeah, yeah. So, Chad, you guys were were mighty damn awesome uh, on Adrian's show uh, the other day and tonight as well. Like the chat has been super lit. Appreciate it. Brutaliana says I will subscribe to Alex. Good, thanks. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah the halloween stream is gonna be good man we got some good stuff yeah we got some freaky shit for you guys uh, apologize for the adult language <laughs> all right so rick peeping back in before 4 33 adrian says adorable thanks for bringing it prof uh it says fair maiden thank you uh thanks alex says carol yeah, Rick's coming back. Yeah, so he's he's working on it. 
You know, old people and technology. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's why I have the Streamyard app because it's uh, less hassle, like less fuss. Um, if you're logged in already, you don't have to uh, log in again or whatever. You know, so I just have it ready like that. You know, works. Wait, it works out way better. Yeah, seems to cut out less too when you're in the um, app versus the mobile browser. You know. But if he's not on PC, I'm not even sure, you know. Yeah, I don't know. He's. Or, I think he's struggling right now to get back in. Wow. The prof, I can barely Google. Said, What's up, House Broken? You coming in mighty late. Uh, prof, I can barely Google. <laughs> you Are you old, too? Okay. Shh. Wonderful panel in chat, says Sunflower Soul. Yeah, we're trying to get uh trying to get Rick in so we can all say good night with a big kumbaya and get this over with. This is our uh, circle in the round, meaning uh it's a little round table. And uh, boy, someday we'll have a larger table, and uh, I'll get a couple of you out of the chat, and we'll do a bigger show. Uh, won't that be fun? Yeah, yeah. do the twelve uh, panel it. crap. No <laughs> offense, he's having a boomer moment. Boy, well, exactly. Exactly. Rick, you, know, you can't do a prop. Uh... No, you know what it is? Rick. <laughs> Rick's used to doing his show, which is always an hour. Okay. He, he, you can't do a prop live and, uh, and operate on battery power, Rick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wish um, YouTube Live had um, like a... Like kind of like how MySpace used to change um, the theme or whatever, you know, that HTML crap or uh, Tumblr too. I wish they had that for YouTube Live where you could change um, like the fonts and ha like the look, GUI basically of um, the YouTube chat and stuff. That would be sick, dude. Because I do like YouTube Live. Um, it's better than Twitch as far as reliability and like, I don't know. I just like, I like it. I'm on it more for sure. I'm not even over on Twitch. If I'm watching Twitch stuff, it's like on YouTube. But the thing that looks cool about Twitch, like the fonts and it, it looks more like a chat that you would see in a video game. So I, that would be cool if they were um, let people edit uh, their own custom like live interface or something, you know, but people probably get way too out of hand with it. That's why they don't allow it they'd be they put all that unicode crap and basically it oh, would let people make that stuff yeah. yeah dude if somebody said something bad in a live like something years ago or whatever then somebody go retroactively like make it all uh unicode crap that can't be translated as easily or read as easily so that's probably why like an issue too you know but um yeah, it's it. That would be cool, though. That would be cool. LK Alex, I just su subscribed. Said Cromley, we can right, make short Thank videos. You, show, show me how to hack something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to get back into that. <laughs> it's been a while, man. I've been doing, I've been doing crazy fucking shit. Yeah, but the <laughs> Curtis Hub stuff, man. We're gonna be showing that. That's the only Twitch sick. I know is the meth head down the road. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, you ready to go, Rick? All right, looks like Rick's back to say goodnight, y'all, or to at least to come in. Whoa, look, a different view. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the other room now. Sweet. Yeah, what's up, Rick? Oh, yeah, man. I, uh, uh, Laura was here earlier. I think she took my, uh, my charger cord and left hers here because the charger cord I found does not fit my laptop. Uh oh. <laughs> boomer moments. Uh, who, who was it that said boomer moment? Let me get that one for you. Oh, oh see, wait a minute. Zero cool said boomer moment. <laughs> I am not officially I am officially not a boomer. I was born in 65, so I am I am that. What is that? Gen X? I'm a Gen X. That's <laughs> sweet, dude. <laughs> I missed a boomer by two years, I think. So Woo! <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Right. We wouldn't have I you any other way, right? Really. My phone right. before, so yeah. Well, man, I think, you know, we kind of like finished all the serious talk. So, uh, yeah, man. Wow. What a, what a, uh, what a night, man. What a, what a case. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Yeah. <laughs> Heather's in here acting rowdy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think, uh, the, all we'll ever get, um, uh, all the answers or whatever, but, um, 
Yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good things coming, and I think uh, stuff, a lot of stuff will be rectified uh, in the future, near future. So, yeah. good times, you know. Good times. It's good seeing you again, Alex. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, man. It is good seeing <laughs> you, man. <laughs> that was a good stream, man. Yeah, it's yeah, good it to be the. It's good to be the three coolest YouTubers covering Delphi. Hey. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, gotta dude. do it. Hey. Yeah, it's we're all job. musicians. We're all musicians too, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's a trip, man. <laughs> yeah, that's like why it. we're so damn cool. <laughs> that's right. There you go. Don't ask my son though. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, Prof. Well, thanks for coming. I mean, it's 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 uh, so cool to have you guys and not have to sit here alone and uh, get the input because, man, it's like it's like uh, I don't think we're that unreasonable in our uh, in our thoughts. And it's it's good to, you know, it's good to get together with like minded people and not gaslight each other. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Comments. What do I do like right now across the board? Um, it seems like it's calming, uh, like de-escalation stuff all the way around right now. So it's pretty good. You know, it doesn't stay that way for long, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it shouldn't be that way right now. Usually like these times in the case are full of mania and stuff, but it is nice that it is super calm right now, you know? Hey, we so don't hate good. nobody but the killers. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good time. I think it'll ramp up. Uh, there'll be an implosion or something uh, soon, and it'll be crazy whether it gets delayed or conviction or innocent, whatever. And then it's going to be super chill after that. I think, like within a week after, and then it'll, it'll probably the case will probably ride out super calmly. I think after that, yeah, at least for the rest of the year for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good times, man. I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. I'm ready for the trial. Me too. I, or at least, if it gets pushed back a little, I'm ready for it when it comes. But hopefully sooner than later. I mean, I agree. <laughs> yeah, if it gets delayed, people are gonna spaz out for like a week, probably. And it's a possibility, man. But like I said, even if that happens. Um, People are honed in on certain things right now, and uh, it's kind of making everyone a little antsy or nervous because uh, that shit does hit hard, you know? So, you know, like a answering the question of why uh, they're taking tips on Delphi still elsewhere, and God knows where else they're taking tips we don't even know about, you know? And that basically comes back to the question of, uh, yeah, is it organized crime or not? So that is going to be addressed at some point. And uh, if the case gets delayed, it'll probably be addressed before trial, I think. So it's good. It's looking good. It's looking better than it used to, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the fast track, man. So it's good times, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, those Halloween lights in back of me, dude, they freaking... Um... I swear they almost caught my comforter on fire or something, dude. They they warm up like crazy. I got them from uh, Spirit Halloween. You guys go. You guys have any Halloween stores out there? Yeah, we got Spirit here. Yeah, that place is. It's way more popular than it used to be. But yeah, they have they have some cool stuff in there sometimes. But uh, yeah, I like I like Halloween. I like the ramp up to Halloween. Um, Halloween day, I usually don't do anything. It's not like um, I usually am not at the house even doing. Uh, like giving out candy or whatever. I'm uh, either asleep or uh, whatever. I just like um, it does kind of have amusement park vibes a little bit as far as um, places doing reskinning themselves and stuff like that and doing new, um, you know, pop up this or pop up that. So that it's pretty cool to see, you know, there's something exciting about that. And uh, they do that even back in July sometimes too out here. And then, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and Christmas, I'm I don't get too as excited for, you know, but um I do like seeing like grandparents and stuff get more excited uh around Christmas time and stuff. So that that's pretty cool to see, you know. 
but yeah i I do like i like spring summer and halloween i like a lot better for sure yeah halloween is my favorite yeah they it is cool man when you watch like a cool like old movie um a horror movie or halloween theme movie it could be a comedy whatever um yeah it's it's pretty sick man (laughs) it's a good time i saw halloween three uh maybe like 10 years ago for the first time in my life. Uh, Cause I didn't see it when I was younger. And uh, that was, that was, I actually like that movie, man. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy, but uh, yeah, we had a Halloween warehouse near me. They used to have, um, yeah, old stuff. And I got a lot of stuff from there before uh, they closed down, but they had stuff from the eighties and nineties with the batteries still in them. And, <laughs> yeah they were leak corroding uh the springs that would carry the batteries and uh that i guess they closed it down because uh an earthquake happened or something and made a crack in the in the warehouse but it was there forever it just closed down but yeah i like that type of stuff man i don't that's the thing it's like you can i can only get so much of that stuff because i'm not a hoarder hoarder so i'll make like you know like a little part of the shelf i'll make uh for Halloween stuff like that or this or that, but um, yeah, with ten or fifteen bucks, you could you could fill up like a quarter qu- corner in your room or even like a like a whole pile of crap <laughs> that takes up you know part part of your good chunk of your room basically. So yeah, it, you know, good things don't last forever, you know. But uh, it was pretty good. But yeah, I do like I like the calm vibes right now, dude. On the case, it's um, it's nice, dude. I think. Because basically something's going to happen no matter how you view the case. That's like basically uh, a win or pushing things forward no matter what, no matter like how you view it from, you know, which angle. So I think that's why things are calmer right now, you know, that's pretty good. Hey, uh, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe jo just says I'm eagerly awaiting the weird Alex V dictionary. So, oh, man. So what is what's the two worlds, uh, UFO world <laughs> and uh Criminal underworld. No, no, no. That you used to, used to say UFO world and and uh, solo world. Solo. <laughs> yeah, explain that yeah. for the people because that, that's funny shit. So UFO world, um, that would be like uh, if I said, "Oh, there's." I saw on Reddit there's rumors that uh, it was like a truck driver. He went from. Uh, Oh, who's that killer? The I seventy five killer. If I said I heard the I seventy five killer, it's something in relation to him. Some guy on Reddit was saying it. That's like UFO world. But then if I t- yeah, I'm serious. But if I tell you guys, um, hey, case is over. It's a wrap. You know, Alan did it, and there's. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to trial wrapping up. That's solo world, basically. <laughs> yeah. And but you could also do. I mean, before arrest, solo world just meant that one guy did it, and it wasn't um, organized crime in nature, basically. But it's kind. Of, it's kind of the same thing now, you know. But yeah, UFO world has a hits, dude. That's been my bread and butter. That's been like through my experiences, dude. It's not about grifting off the case. Like my experience with the case. So if I touch like a material. And I'm like, hey, this thing's like kind of burned in my hand. It's burnt other people's hands. I think this material is uh, has heat in pro, you know, in its properties. That's basically what I, I'm about, basically. And then, yeah. uh, so, and then, you know, other people argue, well, it's not hot to me. It seems like it's it's a cold and done material, like just stone instead. Like so, that's why people have different um, opinions and crap, you know, but. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, I think it's like yeah, criminal in nature for sure. Mm-hmm. Somehow I don't know how exactly, but you know <laughs> it is. But yeah, uh, like even the Stevenson's tips and uh, other stuff I've like figured out after arrest, it is going off. Um, yeah, rumors and theories and spec. That's because like, so I'll put it this way. Uh, <laughs> vetting on alan just being the only guy and cases of rap and ignore all the other stuff that's like a safe solid investment like if we were investors or trying to predict the future or whatever and then uh same with alan's not the guy and we'll never find the, the guy or have no inkling of where the other guy is or whatever and what what this type of stuff we're talking about is uh 
we're doing we're doing like penny stocks basically or whatever you know so it's like or high risk you know volatile stocks or whatever so each of us kind of has one foot in one foot out of uh like the stable uh stock or investment and then we have we have our our hands dipped in uh other you know the high yeah, we stuff. diversify good way to put yes, it yes exactly so we're like we're on solid footing but <laughs> then also uh very risky investment but those are the ones that pay off like i i put uh thousands of dollars into xrp so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh god damn that is where we're at yeah that is kind of where yeah. we're at because like even the Stevenson's crap, it, it it's not that's what it's not important because it's like oh it's Stevenson's and it's Alex Voorhees. Well, it's not about that. It's that <clears throat> it pings back to stuff that it digs up a lot of stuff. Like Rick said, opens doors that have been opened by other people way before me. So I'm kind of curious to see if if that pings again after trial. What which one of those is um, ends up being significant uh, down the road? Basically, you know, but if the cops aggressively shut it down after and derp out and be like, Oh no, it, it wasn't connected at all. And the people who did the said this or that, um, you know, podcast or YouTube YouTubers that we were close with or whatever, after arrest, if they said this or that, we didn't give them permission to say that. So that's not on us. If they do that type of thing, then we could still kind of gleam that, uh, they were badgered by somebody up higher to shut it all down, basically. I think. So their reaction will give away a lot of answers, I think, man. Yeah, for sure. Well. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, good. Rick? Um, or anything in the chat? Anything you, you know? Well, I think uh, right now, we need more of this type of thing where people just discuss and, you know, uh, I, I think people get a lot out of that sort of thing. Um, there are definitely two hardcore sides right now. And um, <clears throat> that's, you know, it's been that way for a while, but it just, it's, it's getting a little more uh, dystopian than it used to be. And, yeah. It's like a loop too. It is like, yeah. um, <laughs> doesn't push things forward you know like so for instance like you're saying right i could scream because i've been screaming about the same everybody you know and people i'm not the only one that's done this on the case like oh so and so did this and that's why it's important but after it's tipped in and stuff it's like then it's a done deal you're not you're in a loop you're not pushing things forward when you do the calm uh sharing sharing of information like we did today that's where Things push forward, and albeit has to be newer, new information, not just right um, yeah. the stuff that you were saying before already. You know, so once once something's a wrap, it's a wrap. Yeah, if you want a, a good result, better result, you got to move forward. You know. Yeah, Indy Cindy says people be buying pitchforks and shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For opinions, hey, what are you know? Should not we all be allowed to have opinions? And if you don't want to hear what I say, go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's why yeah, I tell people pretty all the time on my channel, you know, you get people come into my channel and they're like, you know, oh, man, when are you going to talk about the case? And I'm like, hey, if you don't like what I'm talking about, you can click on the X and you're not in here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, my best work on any case, it was when I was... Um, <laughs> calm and uh uh not in a loop grievance loop or any personal loop outside of the case whatever it's like it's better you got to um be more unpredictable but not just not unpredictable because you're on substances or whatever unpredictable because you're like we said you're taking those risky um chances you're making those risky like investments basically on top right. of whatever is more stabilized so um yeah, that's kind of what we're doing right now. It works. It works out much better, because uh, yeah, the grievance loops once they're done, it's done, man. It's like it doesn't it doesn't push the case forward at all. So, yeah, but, um, my thing too. After trial wraps up or whatever, new um, opportunities are going to happen, basically, as far as uh, information to go off of and where that leads. So there'll be more threads to close after trial wraps up no matter how which way it wraps up so some big revelation will come uh from that 
I think, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, JoJo. <laughs> yeah, well, like Snay says, we could easily turn off uh, this YouTube and never come back to it and have perfectly happy, healthy, productive uh, lives. And uh, that's a skill that not many people have on these YouTubes. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Some good stuff, man. Man, it was good having y'all tonight. Thanks so much. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I want to do another one. Let's do another one in uh, a few weeks or maybe when trial starts or right before. Sure. Like I'm up. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's – Good talking, good nice stuff, and uh, man, the chat's just been awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's been good. It's been real good, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, Rick, it was good seeing you, man, and yeah, freaking prop you, too. Alex. Yeah, it was a good stream, man. All right, all right. Good night, Alex. Good night, Rick. Uh, I'll let you guys drop, and I'll say good night to the chat. I really appreciate it. Like I said, y'all. If you haven't already subscribed to these guys' channels, you know, Delphi After Dark, Weird Alex V. Okay, give them some props and hit my like, too. <laughs> Hell, yeah. All, All right, right, take later. care. Good night, right. guys. Hell Good night, y'all. All right, thank you so much to my amazing guest. Uh, look, minds, okay, okay, big minds, wonderful minds, intelligent, brilliant minds. Don't take them for granted, okay? Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't take you for the for granted in the chat either. Uh, you in the chat, I've always uh, <laughs> kept my chat in an order, orderly manner, uh, orderly fashion. So uh, I ended up with a bunch of bright minds in my chat. So I just really do appreciate all of you in here. Uh, everyone, please tell Rick and Alex good night uh, before we get too far into me telling you good night. Uh, let them know you really appreciate them by going to their channels also and uh, showing them some love because uh, they didn't have to come and participate tonight. They did it out of the kindness of their hearts and their uh, their love for uh, Libby and Abby. And uh, and you just that's something you, you can't take away from them. OK, so please uh, show them some love. Uh, as far as myself, I do appreciate your time here. Um, Wow, we had a lot to cover. We've covered so much uh, on every show. I've just really enjoyed covering all we have. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's still so much more uh, to show you guys. And, uh, you know, uh, be aware that uh, I did release a new video today. It's been in the members only for a couple weeks. But uh, today I released it free to the public. It's called Train Guy. <clears throat> so if you're... Uh, new here and you had not watched train guy yet uh it's in the video section so go watch train guy it's an absolutely fascinating uh discussion between a potential witness and uh a member of the community <clears throat> and uh i think it's very thought provoking and um it is what it is so uh there's that and like i said tomorrow i have another video coming that'll be uh full of some receipts and some thought-provoking information. So please enjoy those videos. Um, if you're on the replay, please make sure that you uh, join the chat to keep with the conversation. Don't let the chat uh, or just myself partake in the conversation. Go ahead and join the replay and uh, join the comment section to uh, discuss with our family members here in the comment section. Really appreciate that. Also, remember to hit the like, and if you feel so inclined, support the channel. You support me financially when you support the channel, whether it's by uh, the merchandise or the uh, super chats or the uh, buy me of coffees or the cash apps or whatever way you choose to support the channel. I do appreciate your support. It's the only thing that keeps me going here uh, other than my own hustle. Um, I'm working at this many hours every day, and, uh, and so I, all your support is appreciated and so thank you for that and thank you mostly for being here and participating in this channel um couldn't do it without you because i would not sit here and talk to myself okay so let's see we got dark arts you do really good work appreciate that get comfortable hearing things you don't like and deal with it builds character yeah thank you very much uh cromley uh 
They are trying to silence those with common sense questions about serious concerns. Yeah, like I said, none of this is outlandish, uh, whack job, uh, hallucinations or conspiracy theories. We're asking uh, serious questions about things that are somewhat concerning, and that's all we've ever done. So, um, And there's a little speculation here and there and a little sharing of information. What's wrong with it? Hidden boss crime, hidden crime boss in Delphi. He's been misdirecting since day one. Organized crime. That's our theory. Trying to be everywhere. All right, Shadow Band. Keep doing. Paradox, you all take care. Have a good night. Tell Laura she's beautiful, says Heather. Good night, Rick, Alex, and Prof. All right, good night, Dean Johnson. Catch that replay, woman. All right. I love being here. Best channel for truth, facts, and everyone is allowed to voice their opinions without being judged or called out. We don't scream at you here, but we might block you if you say something infuriating. <laughs> Already had to do it once tonight, but uh, good night, y'all, says Nancy Drew. Good night, y'all, says I of Apophis. Thank you so much, Heather. All right, Delphi After Dark, says Dean. Good night. I will subscribe. Thank you, Andy Cindy. Awesome show. Smash the like. Party time, says Mar. Still here. Glad to know you're not scared to go against the grain. I don't give a shit. I mean, like I said, we turn this computer off tomorrow and never come back. And uh, would be no worse for it. So, all right. Chevy Killer, please and thank you. For okay, Night Night Boys. Thank you, Mr. Prof, Mr. Snay, Weird Alex V, Mods and Chat. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay, stay, stay safe. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Amy says, support the channel. I agree. Thank you. My uh, Amy has been the most wonderful mod. So thank you, Amy, for being a, a wonderful mod for me. I just really do. It's invaluable. And plus, you bring me flowers. All right. Thank you, Cromley. You watch Train Guy? Never heard it at all. Okay. Go Rick and Alex. It was great. Very good at what they do. All right, good one, Prof. What up, Four Pits? Thank you, and good one, good one to you. What's up, Zero Cool? Do you take donations in XRP? I sure the fuck would. I take any donations. Let's see. I love your people. Take care of your neighbors. Forgive your enemies. Email. Check out the about section. I have my email posted. Okay, Sandy D is awesome. Yeah. Like, subscribe, share away. Thank you very much. Sending love and light to everyone. Thank you very much. The hearts, I love them. All right. Love Prouse Channel, and I love my JoJo. <laughs> you get a certain age, and it's like, I don't give a shit. Bring it. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're the only channel I watch. It's facts. You're great to listen to. Good night. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Thank you very much. Check out the community page, too. There's things there that are only there. Okay. All right. You guys are something. Thanks for laughing. Okay. True Justice. Thanks for being here as well. Awesome show. Thanks. Good night and good night chat and mods. All right. So that's the end of the chat. I'll leave it open for a few minutes like I always do. Uh, and I'll join you there in momentarily. But let me just say thank you to everyone like uh, Dean Johnson, Cromley, True Justice, Heather Brown, Amy, Sandy D, Miracle Hearts, Chevy Killer, Indy Cindy, JoJo, um, Sunflower Soul. Who else we got here? Zero Cool. That's right. That's right. Zero Cool. House Broken. Dean Johnson. Northern Star. Um, woman Doing a Shadow Band. <coughs> Carol. Mar R. Hard Candy. Lisa. Suede Smith. Indy Cindy. I don't know if I said your name yet or not. I have Apophis. Uh, Jamie. Uh, Paradox, Cromley, Margaret, mm, Weird Alex B, and Rick Snay, of course. Uh, Fair Maiden Winds, Dark Arts by Adrian. Um, and look, I'm not going to go back much further, but everyone who was here way at the beginning. If I haven't said your name yet, uh, you know that I say thanks to you. Noe Amos, um, 
Jojo, if you would like me to say good night, uh, just leave your name right quick down at the bottom. I'll say good night. Bruto Leon. All right. And all of you guys, okay? I'll just leave it at that. Okay. All of you guys. Rebecca in 1965. So everyone who was here, super appreciate it. Uh, Connie Lewis, welcome, my new member. And uh, thank you to It's a New Day. Go subscribe to her uh, for the super sticker and Cromley for the super sticker. And uh, hey, man, nice little Friday night hangout. And we'll see you soon. Uh, like I always say, hug your kids, hug your wife and your loved ones. Love the ones you love. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Really appreciate all the time you spent here with us. So good night. And I'll see you in the chat. Appreciate it.
Thank you.